I suggest let's just keep going. This challenge is going to be quite lengthy anyways, so I might as well just, you know, continue, I feel. So, back to bonking enemies with just the attack command. Welcome back, everybody. Last time we managed to defeat Liquid Flame and the Castle Escape, and we got some new jobs out of the deal. We have now acquired the interesting Mediator, aka Beastmaster, which I'm not really sure whether we can do anything with this one. Like, I can't think of anything inherently that I would want to do with them. Same with the Geomancer, can't really use them, I don't think, although maybe I come up with something more clever later. Um, another class that we could use, and definitely will use, is the Ninja. The ninja is going to be one of the more useful ones, I feel, because you can attack with two weapons at a time. Currently only daggers, but we can basically unlock the double-handed ability and transfer it to other classes or characters, so that can be extremely useful. Usually the ninja is one of the most powerful classes because you can throw very poor, powerful items that are easy to just acquire. But in this case, just using two weapons to attack basically doubles your damage output. Your offhand weapon does not have a damage negative penalty in any capacity. So... At least that's what I'm thinking of for now. Um, speaking of thinking of, we did actually get, very luckily, a bow from the previous boss as well. A fire bow. And this actually might be something I really want to use on the next boss, because the next boss is going to be quite a big meanie, let's put it this way. One thing I was kind of contemplating, I probably shouldn't worry too much about mastering chops in any capacity, for now. Here, Galuf is level 4 monk, it doesn't really do anything for him, like, there's, for this kind of challenge, there's no benefit to having level 4 specifically. Level 5, he would get a 10% HP boost, passively. So that would be nice, but it's kind of far away for the ability points. And mastering those jobs feels inefficient until we get to more efficient places later. So I think I'm not going to necessarily worry about this. Um, the plan for Biblos currently is to just have a character continuously try to heal, but for this we definitely need a bit more maximum HP to survive repeated attacks because we will only be able to heal one person at a time and we would preferably keep more than one person alive at a time. Interestingly enough, as good as I think Ninja will be, I don't think it's gonna be that great for now because Ninjas attack twice and consequently provoke two counterattacks at a time. So there's that. Lena still needs to learn the ability to prevent back attacks just as a not thief, because thief just doesn't have good damage output really. So yeah, the castle says exploded. We can now go to the west, but I'm not entirely sure whether there's much of a benefit because the enemies over there are not going to be really particularly great for us to defeat to begin with. I would say because they have just. Compared to how much more damage um, they do, as well as HP they have, or how long it takes to take them out, I think this area here is just basically strictly better. Welcome to you, Rune of the Mill. Good morning. How am I feeling? Uh, well, currently it is the new normal, which kind of wish it was the previous normal, but it's fine for now. I hope you're doing well. Not farming Nax? No, Nax don't give a whole lot of experience. Or ability points for that matter, which... I'm mostly interested in ability points for the most part. But experience is going to be... well, actually no. Experience is going to be more important for now. Because... The wild wolves, or the Nax in the... forest are mostly useful because they... give you really good money for how easy they are to knock out. Their experience is okay, especially for how easy they are to knock out, plus we cannot, well, multi-target. So we can only hit one enemy at a time, so that doesn't help. 
the snacks. Yes. So I'm probably going to stay here until... Let me think about this. Galaf is likely the best candidate for changing chops to another class, because he has the highest the maximum HP of all the characters, even when switching classes. It's not a big difference, but, well, even the small things might make a difference. Against the upcoming boss, anyways. So I will likely have him become a time mage for the boss fight. Then I will likely have Monk and Ferris be the Berserkers again, just hoping that the hammers hit. And Lena will become likely the Freelancer to use the bow. Actually, maybe it's more sensible to turn... Galaf out. To turn Ferris or Bonk into... Maybe it's more sensible to turn Ferris or Bonk into the Freelancer because they have more, like, baseline strength. And I was just thinking, baseline strength, is there any way for me to increase the other character's strength? Efficiently. And then I was thinking, doesn't the Monk's Brawl command increase your character's strength as well? I'll make sure you double check this real quick because it's been a while. Ah yes, indeed. So, Brawl actually increases my character's strength. So funnily enough, what I should have done is I should have... ...let Lena stay... ...a monk. I'm actually gonna do this right now. I should have let her stay as a monk until she learned Brawl, because I'm pretty sure you learn Brawl relatively early. That way she would actually deal pretty respectable damage as a thief as well because she would have well one of the biggest downsides of a thief is they have really low strength let me actually see how long it takes to get brawl Only level 3, so she needs 5 plus 30 more ability points. Alright, that might be a good place to just go to for now. The downside, of course, for now is that we can get back attacked, which means because we are pretty much exclusively melee based with our characters, we will deal only half the damage, since we will be stuck in the back row. Since if you get back attacked, enemies will deal... Well, your front and back rows are going to get flipped. And if your character is sitting in the back row, they will deal half the physical damage and take half the physical damage to enemies. Which, by the way, there's also enemies that have back and front rows, which is why I'm targeting the way I do. So, for example, in this encounter here, I first need to knock out this front eagle... Eagle? Enemy? And then I can knock out the back one, because if I do it the other way around, the back one will take only half the damage. Sometimes less than half, because of how rounding works, but yeah. As in, a lot less than half, because how rounding works, because it halves your multiplier. Maybe since we are just kind of sitting here... ...trying to work this out. This game here works on, basically, you have a certain attack power, which is, well, reduced by the enemy's defense, and then you have the attack multiplier, which is usually based on strength on most weapons. Sometimes uh, magic, sometimes agility, although kind of depends on what weapon you're using. For the most part, unless otherwise mentioned, it is based on 
strength. Even the bow is based on strength. Which, thinking about it, drawing a bowstring, especially like the heavier bows, requires a ton of force, so it makes sense. Even if other games might have taught us that the archers are the big lanky guys that are just like very dexterous. You have to be dexterous too, but don't underestimate how much power it takes to draw a bow. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to put it. They require a lot of specialized strength. Gain some more levels, that's basically what I'm looking for. I wonder whether it would be sensible to have Kalov get to the next level of Monk, so he gets the plus 10% HP bonus, and then try to defeat Biblos. Normally if you do like a Berserker only challenge with in Final Fantasy V, you need to level up quite a lot in order to defeat Biblos, in order to have like a chance to beat him to be specific. We don't have to go quite that far, because we can specifically target what we're trying to hit, and we have the healing rod to heal. But it's still going to be... Well, a lot more restricted than usual, I guess. You're assuming I'm going to learn Berserk on all characters. I actually haven't considered just learning Berserk, to be honest. Would there be much of a reason to learn Berserk? Because we have 200 Berserkers. Berserk does not actually give you the Berserker strength, by the way. It's just a 50% damage boost, so it won't only be really helpful on a character who already has a good chunk of strength. Like, I guess Monks would be a good candidate. Well, I say good, but the catch is Monks need a lot of levels, a lot more than I even have right now, despite grinding for a while, in order to deal decent damage. Unless they crit, then... yeah. But it's an 8% chance to crit, so it's not terribly likely. The biggest downside on monks is that their animation with two punches just takes way longer than swinging a sword. If there are no multiple targets, there's zero, zero penalty for being berserked after the first turn, right? I know, sort of. I mean, it depends on the enemy you're fighting. On Biblos, there would be because he has counterattacks, and you might sometimes want to hold off on attacking for reasons on various enemies. But for the most part, it's true. The biggest downside, actually, of using Berserk, especially in the regular encounters here. It is not even necessarily the targeting, but it takes an entire turn for a character to get a turn, and then they self-berserk, and then on the next turn they're going to start attacking as a berserker. So it actually takes longer than the regular berserker for them to start attacking. So it's useful in very limited circumstances. Leno still takes a while here. 
You were thinking for bosses. Yeah. Miblos, there is reason to not attack or specifically attack like something else. But I will be using or trying two Berserkers on Biblos. With one healer with the healing stuff and Well Probably just one cactus surviving. So we're currently defrosting the fridge, and turns out there was some chocolate ice cream in there. And it has to be eaten now. That's a tragedy. I was muted intentionally this time, thank you, Valakar. I do appreciate you calling it out, though. Because I do it way too often where it's accidental. Poor ice cream. <laughs> right. Somebody might randomly target the other Aegil. If not, they're just gonna knock out the zoo. Actually, that might be more sensible to knock out the zoo here instead of targeting the Aegil first. Ah, that might be enough. Okay, not quite. Alrighty, I'm back. From a damage standpoint, what's better, dual wield or two-handed? 
That's a complicated question to answer. I mean, on the face value, as long as you can one hand, a uh, two hand, and as long as you can dual wield a weapon, there is largely not much of a reason to pick one over the other, for the most part. However, there's a bit, a few caveats there. Specifically, two-handed is... I actually was about to say, enemy defense is gonna get calculated in twice if you are dual-wielding over two-handed. But I'm not sure it actually makes a difference. Because I think Ferris just reached another damage multiplier. She is... Well, and Bonk as well. They hit over 500 now, so that's pretty powerful. Um, There's a lot of weapons you can't two-hand that you can dual-wield. But those are not necessarily strictly better. I would say it depends. I'm not entirely sure how else to think about this, because two-handing a Brave Blade is strictly better than dual-wielding with a Brave Blade, because there only is one Brave Blade. You can uh, dual-wield a Brave Blade and a Ragnarok. But then again, dual-wielding has the benefit that if the weapons give you stats or other benefits, they can also just add more strength. Like, uh, I think a Ragnarok Blade is like plus five strength. I don't know. I feel like, generally speaking, they are close enough together that it is mostly a question of reference. Dual wielding is just easier to understand because you just have two weapons that you attack with. Whereas two-handed, you just need to specifically not have a shield. And you can only two-hand specific weapons. Or weapon types, anyways. Assuming two copies of the same one-handed weapon, what is better, two-handed or dual-wield? My brain doesn't... I'm quite not sure how it's calculated. Like, my initial instinct is to say that if an enemy has any defense, dual-wielding is worse because the defense is calculated for both weapons, whereas it is only calculated once for the double damage of the weapon. But then again, it is multiplied afterwards, so I'm not sure it makes a difference. That's, actually, let's just make a thing. How does 200 even work? I think 200 doubles your multiplier. It doesn't actually double your attack power, unlike Sword Dance. So let's see. If 200 has, let's say, a weapon with an attack power of 10, and an enemy has 8 defense, so the baseline attack power of the weapon would be 8 and 2, so 10 minus 2. My goodness, brain. 10 minus 8 is 2. There we go. So if you then attack for 2 damage twice, or whether you double the 2 damage, I think it literally doesn't make a difference. Yeah, no, I actually don't think it makes a difference. Like, that's, I guess that's a general case scenario, whether you're two-handing two weapons. Let's say Mithril Swords in this case. Two Mithril Swords would be just as good as two-handing one Mithril Sword. Generally speaking, it doesn't matter. Obviously it matters when enemies can counterattack, and when you're attacking with two weapons, they can counterattack twice. But that's a specific scenario. Dual is better if you have so much damage that you hit 9999 damage per hit. Yes, actually that is probably one of the most specifically realistic scenarios that you could theoretically encounter without doing any crazy shenanigans.
If you have two hunting, two weapons. If you have four plus arms and your name is Gilgamesh. Well, that's a different specific scenario. Alrighty, with this paddle here, Lena is finally going to unlock Brawl as a monk, which I should have done before. I just forgot that monk has an easy way to transfer the monk strength over. And this will actually make her deal dramatically more damage as a thief. So, basically, the short version is, if I turn Lena into a thief without equipping any ability on her, she has currently 26 strength. But if I give her the Brawl ability, which normally powers up your unarmed attacks, let's put it this way. Oh yeah, that Thief Glove has defensive stats, I forgot about this. Um, she effectively has 52 strength now. Literally double. I actually don't remember whether she had the training suit on before or not, but... It's literally double right now, so this does roughly equivalent or equate to double the damage output. So it is a pretty dramatic increase in power. Alrighty. Now we can finally not get back attacked anymore, although I haven't gotten back attacked once. I assume I just got lucky. I don't actually know if the dash patch of this actually has any influence on back attacks. Like, it shouldn't. But I don't know if it does. I mean, there's an easy way to test this now to think about it. Let's go back real quick. It's gonna be a bit of a detour, for no other purpose aside from my curiosity about this specific dash patch run. Wow. So much more damage. By the way, if you have a monk and you run into wild nux and you have a decently high level like here Galof has, a kick will usually just knock out the entire wild nux population here. So that's just more efficient than having to attack. But of course, can't kick when you're only allowed to use the attack command. Oh, also, if you're looking for ingredients for a chemist and you want to have turtle shells... This area here on the right is actually better than the one on the left, because this is a different quadrant of the map, let's put it this way. Is it quadrant? What is a quadrant? No. It's a different chunk of the map for different encounters, which does consequently mean that there are slightly different encounters, even though they are largely the same. The two grass turtle encounter for turtle shells for your chemist is a bit more likely here. A different tile. I guess you could call it a tile too. And yeah, two hand, yeah, using magic sword for, I don't know, lightning damage on Omega, attacking twice, is usually better because the damage cap is 9999. Hey, Cobalt Leafion, thank you, and welcome, I hope you're doing well. I'm currently briefly running back just to test something. I'm curious whether the dash patch actually just gives you passively all the thief abilities or not. I'm still going to play it as if it didn't, by the way. Aside from being able to just run everywhere. Oh yeah, Project Demi was the other thing that I was thinking of. But apparently I didn't have that loaded onto my SD2 SNES. Back. 
Why? Welcome to your end of the name bites the dust. I hope you're doing well. So here I'm gonna save because I'm gonna die here because I have no realistic way of defeating what I'm gonna encounter here because in the castle basement here there are these little what do you even call these guys? I forget their name. Darky Mouse, right? I made it all the way here to the Elf Cape. That would be amazing if I could just keep it, but I'm pretty sure the game is not gonna let me. Here you get an Elf Cape too, just in case you manage to somehow beat those guys. I doubt it. Either way, with a thief in the party, we are guaranteed to not get back attacked. These guys always back attack normally. Also we deal zero damage. They also hit like a truck. Oh yeah, Galaf is the one that guy that could theoretically hit it for some damage, but this thing also has a lot of evasion. It also has 666 HP, so Galaf would need to crit twice. So the chances of us being able to defeat this thing are effectively zero, because even if we do deal damage, it will berserk us. Actually, thinking about it, that's normally detriment, but here it would actually improve our damage output theoretically. But yeah, as you can see, we just don't do anything to this thing. Which is why I don't expect to be able to get the Elf Cape and survive down here, it's the short version. Um, if we had a defense piercing weapon, like... Oh yeah, if we had a defense piercing weapon, this would make it a lot easier, let's put it this way. Or even possible, at least. Alright. We're gonna wipe here anyways. Sorry for the little sound blip there. Oh, that's not too loud on your end. So, and then the other one I wanted to test is whether... Oh my goodness, music. <laughs> that was the capture card probably having a bit of trouble figuring out how to sound. Either way... Trying again. Theoretically, they should always back attack me here. Alright, I've just gotten lucky. Back attacks do still work. I'm gonna mute this thing and reset. That way we don't get the weird sun blips. I was just curious whether the dash patch interferes with other abilities. Because when I did... Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, when I did, I think, one of my solo character challenge runs, I had a dead thief in the party the entire time, because I thought, oh, they're not gonna do anything, they just r let me run around much more quickly, not realizing that I was preventing back attacks by having a thief in the party. Yeah, Berserker with Hammer and Axe would theoretically work to defeat those Garki Masras. Or whatever they are called. I actually didn't pay attention. But yes, those would that would be the one way of how I could theoretically defeat them. Which I'm not gonna worry about the elf cape right now. I think it will be handy for later. But I can do this well later. party indefinitely already hits pretty hard, but they will need to have a lot more than that damage. Hey G, have welcome. How are you doing today? Literally back attack as you, as you see his back and attack his back. Right. I guess I never thought about this. Did Burst Cycles have a downside as this challenge? In battles where random targeting isn't an issue. They're slow. That's the only downside, really. They're just really slow. Which actually is an interesting point, now that you've mentioned speed. What is the easiest way to transfer speed from another character? Let's see...
Equip bow with hunter agility. Actually, berserkers with bows are actually pretty good. Not gonna lie, like, genuinely, if you have a berserker and have equipped bow on it and give it... Especially, like, that bow from the castle in World 2, Xdev's castle. The Gale bow, I think it is called. They actually hit real well. And they get Hunter Agility from Equip Bow. Equip Whip also transfers agility, but the problem is the Beastmaster doesn't really have much agility to begin with, so it doesn't really do that much. Equip Harp. Actually, Equip Harp might be one of the quickest ways to get agility. And it also gives the Bard's magic power to another, another character. Bard's magic power isn't terrible. Wait, is it? Hold on, how much is it? It's 35. I guess it's just a bit above average, but nothing too crazy. Of course, there's agility from a thief, but that takes a long time to unlock. So I'm pretty sure if I was going for ability point efficiency or speed, Equip Harp would be the best. But I think in the long run, Equip Bow might be the way to go for some characters. What is magic power for certain weapons? Um, let's see. If you have bells, they scale off of agility and magic power. So there's no equipped bell command, unfortunately. Otherwise, that actually might be the fastest. But yeah, there's a few select weapons, actually not that many, that benefit dramatically from magic power. Also, by the way, I'm probably not going to use the magic underflow for the Berserker, just because I'm curious how much more difficult it will be without it. Equip Bell is an inherent passive for the Freelancer. I mean, Freelancer can equip everything, so technically true. Bard is better than Red. Yes, magic power wise, that is definitely true. Red has just very slightly above average stats in everything. It's actually kind of unfortunate on how that works, I will say. I really like Red Mage though. The utility is great. And it's one of the few classes where you can actually effectively sword dance with. If only your vitality was better. <laughs> Freelancer doesn't get the passive stats from the inherent equipabilities unless the job is masters. Yes, you don't get this. You get all the stats of the. Well, all the highest stats of the classes, basically. It's just. It's not just the equip ones, but yes. Red Mage is so weak in this game. The stats are terrible. But I really like the utility and the unique potential. So basically the Red Mage Bus Dancer is actually one of my favorite Forge of Fiesta combos. Just because you can actually effectively sword dance. And especially if you have a thief on top of it, you can start sword dancing actually starting World 1. Really efficiently. You wish you could have endgame on the floor with Galuf. His magic is low enough to use a rune axe and still on the floor. Yes. That would theoretically work. Well, you can on the floor a rune axe if you are willing to equip a Titan's glove and are willing to steal for it until you finally get it. Oh wow, we deal 600 damage now with these guys. Maybe I don't need to go quite to that level. 
Yeah, it'll be fine. Yes, girl, do road slash defend count as no attack commands and does run. Yes. So I cannot run, I cannot change the road, and I cannot defend. If I could defend, actually, that would make a lot of things a lot easier. Like just defending alone. Or switching rows, because then I could actually stop worrying about back attacks so much. You know, I just realized there is a free heal in the library that I could use. So this challenge is all about job builds and equipment, pretty much. And resource management, because if I'm not allowed to use magic or items outside of combat, then I can't heal up. Well, I can't use them in combat either, I guess. Are there any weapons that drain enemy HP? Yes. There's one. The problem is it has a 25% chance to hit. And unless you would allow the aim command from the hunter, that's not terribly useful. There's only a blood sword, no lance. We have a healing staff to heal with, outside of hints. It's a bit awkward, but my plan will be to dual wield healing staves with one character. I don't even know if you get to heal attacks off with that, or whether it even works. I've never tried it. But I can't try it until World 3, where I actually get a second healing staff. Because I can't steal a second one until World 3. And yes, the character will be stuck with the healing stuff that is indeed that cute. 25% is still more reliable than zombie circles, you would guess. Only if you have the magic power step to support it. Because it scales off of magic power. That sword, specifically. Wow, Lena one-shots a turtle now? I'm impressed. It would be funny if you could do hand the healing stuff for more, potent, for more potent heal. I think that would be fantastic. That would even add some more variety and utility to that. Like. If you were to change up some functionalities of various items, thanks to two hand, thanks thanks to two handing them, I think that could be great. Let's see if these are any good. Mithril dragons have a good chunk of defense, but we do hit decently hard at this point. Ooh. They have that much HP too. I don't think this is going to be worthwhile to fight them. This is a preemptive strike. I do believe they can also use Blaze, so that hits my entire party for 25% of their maximum HP. And it's only two ability points. So yeah, equip staves on a ninja or dual wielding on a time mage or something is gonna be my goal. 100.99% because it's basically 100% which includes all the best equipment pieces that I can get 
Well, all the rare equipment pieces, really. Not strictly the best ones. As well as all weapon orbs and one additional weapon orb that you cannot normally get. Which means we will be able to level up the sword up to 8.99 as well, which actually complicates weapon leveling a whole lot. Oh, I just realized that Double Grip apparently gives you... Character 37 string? Applied before character bonuses. What does that even mean? How does enemy defense work in this game? It's actually quite simple. A weapon has an attack power, in this case the Guardian Dagger has 36 attack power, and enemies have a flat amount of defense that just subtracts from the attack power. So if an enemy has 50 defense and the dagger has 36 attack, it's just minus 14, so you deal zero damage to it. There's a bit of variance on your weapon's attack power, specifically daggers have like 36, 37, 38, and 39, I believe, are the possible attack power values it can randomly roll. So the daggers can go up a little bit. So, and I think for the swords, it's kind of more based on like the power of the sword. Like it, the higher the, ver uh, the higher the power, the more the variance it is. But daggers are specifically like four different rolls you can get, or five. The strange attack formula does not apply to defense, basically. This just applied to the multiplier that is, like, multiplied after defense subtraction. So if your roll gets subtracted to zero, or, well, your attack power gets subtracted to zero, then no matter what you multiply that number with, it's still, still going to be zero. Daggers have the oddity that sometimes you can get one more multiplier than otherwise normally possible. That's the one difference. You just kind of have, like, instead of you multiply it by 8, you can sometimes multiply it by 9, depending on agility and level. Yeah, get during the no spreadsheet challenge. I'm actually not using the spreadsheet, I'm just looking at the algorithm guide. Plus, um, the Photo Fiesta, and not Photo Fiesta, the Final Fantasy Fiesta, that will be without any spreadsheets and other tools. It will just be everything in my head that might still be around. How much longer do you need, Galof? 19 more points. Okay, we're getting there. Oh yeah, I just realized there's going to be a boss before Biblos. That is Ifrit. Huh. I didn't think about that one at all, actually. But I feel like we have a character just using the healing stuff, it should be fine.
By the way, these silent bees have a sting attack or needle attack that has a 50-50% chance to either silence you or blind you. And blind persists outside of battle. And, well, I can't use items, so healing blind would be pretty awkward. Because I have to go to an inn or to a healing thing somewhere. Which is pretty nearby here in this case. But basically another big reason why I really don't want to have back attacks happen, because they could just throw these random status effects at me. How can you heal zombie? I actually haven't thought about that at all. You can't. I have to 100% of the time avoid zombie. I never thought about that, Varlakar. <laughs> I can't heal zombie status. Is there something that makes you immune to zombie? I'm pretty sure there's like the bone mail, but that's it. The angel ring makes you immune to zombie status. Right. I need angel rings. At least we don't have to worry about zombie status until I think the dimensional rift really. So I don't think I can heal zombie at all. Maybe some cutscenes heal zombie? <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, I wonder if you have Kryal and. If you have Kryal and Butt Zombie at the end of World 2, does that get healed? Because these are the only two characters you have in the end. That would be funny to test sometime. Either way, Lena finally learned caution. And this means she will be able to prevent back attacks even as a not thief anymore. Although now that I, well, finally put Brawl on her, her damage actually is not too terrible, I guess. But I can actually start teaching her other stuff, I suppose. But then again, how long does it take for her to master the thief at this point? Uh, the next command is Mug, which I can't use. And then it's 300 more to Artful Dodger, so 450 points. That's a lot, so I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I say we're not gonna worry about that for now, but what else am I gonna worry about? Maybe she's just gonna go as a... Mystic Knight? Mystic Knight has good survivability. And good agility. They have like... They have literally the second highest agility of all the chop classes. Well, the same as Ninja, by the way. They have both, both 38 baseline. You guess Fork Tower is also a last resort. I didn't think that far either. Uh, Fork Tower actually shouldn't be too bad, honestly. Because I can just use the magic... a uh, Mage Masher to bounce silence off of my characters and then hit him. So it's definitely doable. It's gonna be awkward, but doable. Zombie counter is dead for party wipes, but not for AP slash experience gain, so it should get healed anytime your party gets reduced. Presumably. I haven't really thought this through, have I? All I know is that I would like to have some character let's see, Lena if she gets to master the thief, which is likely since she already started. She would have the agility of the thief, so we don't need more agility characters necessarily. I would like for her to have something that has high HP. 
Monk has the highest HP. Knight isn't terrible with that either, though. Alternatively, something magic step. Yeah. I plan on going for somebody else for the healing stuff, by the way. Probably Gallop slash Cryle in the end. So he will be the ninja. I don't have actually much of a reason to switch Lena around. Like, Monk will deal more damage, I guess. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave Lena as a thief for now. I think that's okay. Galuf is going to soon learn... 10% HP, and then we can start going for Ifrit and the Biblos, see how well that might work. Oh, I think Lena leveled up and lost in attack multipliers, since she did not actually one-shot the turtle anymore. Does HP transfer to Freelancer? If you master the job, yes. So if I master a monk, you get basically the best strength and HP stat. Berserkers and Knights are also really good for HP and strength, though, so... Maybe I should have her a Berserker for now. Like, master Berserker with somebody? Kind of makes sense. Because I would have equipped access to... Sure, why not? I'm gonna give her a Berserker. And since she doesn't have 200 anyways, the Guardian Dagger is basically as good as it gets. Yeah, let's go with that. I think this is fine. Maybe. Probably fine. So if I go for mastering things, she would probably be mastering Berserker and Thief. And then I would be free to pick whatever weapon. So she would be more stain attacker. Um, Galaf is going to be the healer with dual-wielding healing staves, or while trial at the end. So, would want to master ninja. Maybe I should master monk on my melee characters instead of going for knight right now, thinking about it. Because why am I mastering knight? Do you have all everything already that I would want? Like 200 is the one specific knight ability that you want to unlock? I guess they're just all around decent early on. And we're already so far in, it's fine, I don't... So the big benefit of Mastering Monk would be that we would get counterattack on the Freelancer. Fork Tower came up, but you weren't here. Is Omniscient possible with attack only? Yes. Basically, what you do is you have somebody with a reflect ring equipped, and then you attack that person with a mage masher to bounce silences off of them, and then you attack with the other characters into omniscient while he is silenced for a brief period of time. It's a bit awkward, but it works. Alternatively, you can run omniscient out of MP by literally just doing nothing. It just takes like half an hour or something. And because of how Final Fantasy V on the SNES works, it is reasonably likely that he'll get into an AI loop, where he just chooses the same attacks over and over again, and these attacks can be a sequence of moves that literally just don't deal any damage to you. As long as you have a reflex ring equipped, maybe a bone nail too. Attack, indeed. Welcome to you. I 
I don't think Kaizen Apples are actually going to be that great, unfortunately. Like, sure, they increase your barehanded damage, or actually just general damage by quite a lot. But missing out on haste is... too big of a downside, I would say. So Hermes Sandals will probably be the default equipment for basically everybody. Would Fork Tower allow to clear zombie? That would be interesting to know. I don't know. I guess one of the questions is, is there any, ever any point in me having a zombie? <laughs> a zombie with a healing rod could be funny. Like a zombie dual wielding healing rods just randomly healing me, and basically having infinite HP to absorb attacks. Actually, that sounds somewhat useful, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. A late game zombie? With dual wielding healing rods, slap a magic power uh, chop onto the character. So that actually might be useful. Sure, you can't control who they are healing, but they would be the ultimate damage sponge. Maybe you have two characters that are dual wielding healing rods, if that even works. I don't even know that yet. But two characters dual wielding healing rods, one of them a zombie for the ultimate damage sponge, so hopefully they get attacked instead of anybody else. The other one can be more specifically healing, while two of the characters are just attacking. And no, zombie is not removed that pins in this game. The characters actually go from 0 HP to their maximum, but the status is not removed at all. Still present. Wonder if Lena is gonna be faster than the bee. Nope, she is not. We resisted the needle. That is the thing that can blind us. Blind, by the way, does work in this game. So Gala just learned 10% HP. Let's go. Blind does work in this game. Unless you equip glasses, then you're immune to it. Does that mean I'm forced to reset if anybody gets zombie right? Yes, probably. And yes, you cannot alter the zombies' gear or jobs, that is indeed accurate. So I would want to dual wield healing stairs, Hermes boots. Actually, maybe a reflect ring instead. Wait, no, a reflect ring would reflect the heal from the healing stays, wouldn't it? So it would almost certainly be haste. I think there's a phoenix down on the right side, I can't use those, so I'm just gonna ignore it. Alrighty, enemy encounters in the library. Once you defeat one of them, they usually switch to a different thing, or the same thing again, I guess. And in every version except for the Pixel Remaster, you actually only get the experience from the last enemy you knocked out here, and the money for that matter. So the library, unfortunately, is a pretty terrible place to grind in for experience. So these guys give 156 skill, 52 experience. This is basically nothing compared to everything else in the rest of the game. But the Pixel Remaster basically fixes that. Like, it seems to be a bug to me, or just not considered. But that's how it is. Alrighty. Welcome to... Ifrit. So my current plan is just using a Time Mage. Actually, does Time Mage or White Mage have higher agility slash... 
I know Time Mage has better magic power, but it might not make a difference. Let's see, Time Mage has 48 magic power. Actually, White Mage even has more magic power. Time Mage has 21 vitality as opposed to White Mage with 24. The only advantage Time Mage has is 26 agility versus 25, so one point better. So actually it's better to use White Mage. I want to use the healing stuff anyways. Plus, let me tell you, Galaf in those ropes looks great. Unfortunately, he actually still will lose the HP from the 10%, doesn't he? Either way, uh, this is where I'm going to go grab your elf cape and give it to Galov. Because he's the most important one to survive. Oh, I didn't lose the 10% HP. Nice. And this is probably fine. So the Guardian Dagger is going to be Lena's best weapon for now. Because Ifrit has a good chunk of evasion. But daggers actually cut enemy evasion in half. I think Ifrit has like 30% evasion. So normally 30% of my attacks would miss. For Lena with a dagger it's only going to be 15%. Let's see, what else? Three years streak, let's go! Belt Fury, thank you so much for 39 months of support. Welcome back. I hope you're doing well, thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Alrighty, let's go. This guy has 3000 HP. Fire 2. On Galov directly, he has good magic defense, I guess. Wait, let me use fight. And this is what Galov is gonna do, he's just gonna heal. 329 HP at a time, which is actually not terrible. This is really good damage, if we hit. It's at about 800. High kick, this is why I gave Galov the thing. This would paralyze him. I also do not want to attack Ifrit with the healing rod, obviously, because otherwise I would heal him. He's not undead. I did not miss yet. One more round of attacks actually would kill him. Flame is 25% of my maximum HP in damage. Maybe I overleveled a little bit, but I guess I'll see at the Biblos. It's definitely going to be an easy fight against Ifrit here. Yeah, we already won. A bit unexpected, not gonna lie. So I'm gonna keep Galuf as a white mage for now. We also get a flame item to throw as a ninja, but well, we can't throw. For once, it's not because I can't get a ninja, this is not a fort of fiesta, but because the throw command is banned. And. 80 months! Wow. Mana, what? Thank you so much for a crazy long time. Who dares to disturb my slumber? Thank you so much for a crazy long time of support. Welcome back. And I'm glad you enjoy your stay. I hope you're doing well. Alrighty, so here we have the stealth rope, which by the way has the exact same defense as the mithril armor, but it has less equipment weight, which actually means, in this case we reach another threshold of getting an agility point, and Ferris on top of that gets an additional agility point, so Ferris is actually two points faster than before. Super duper 80. Thank you so much, What? That's really nice of you. Mucus, I think that is damage over time. I need to heal everybody still. Okay, it's that encounter again. It's always the same sequence of enemies, depending on which encounter you get. I'm glad you target the same guy multiple times. That way I don't need to heal up anybody else. Thank you very much. Oh, it does also slow fairies, which is going to be a big issue on Biblos as well. Because the only way to remove slow in this game is either cast haste, or... That guy's in rage. It's either to cast haste, in order to remove slow, or you knock out a character and revive them. Neither of which I can do. I reckon that Dillis. Attack, 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 indeed. Welcome to you. I hope you're doing well. Wait, is this the Phoenix Town? Oh, the other chest was an ether, I guess? I don't remember. 
preemptive attack. So this is a potential encounter that cycles through literally all of the potential pages. So page 32 to 64 to 128. Nope, this is the easy encounter. Okay, this is the literal easiest encounter in the game or in the library. So I do not mind one bit. Here we have one more guaranteed encounter. You can't run away from this one, by the way. Hero 2, I'm just gonna heal that up, that's fine. I think Ferris is missing a little bit of HP. But this might just be fine. Right? Yeah, this is probably as good of a setup I'm going to get for Biblos here. Alrighty, how do I want to approach this? The big issue about Biblos is that you kind of really want to hit him with as hard of attacks as you can, because every time you attack him, he has a chance to cast armor on himself, which means he reduces all physical damage incoming by half, which is kind of a big deal. But simultaneously, the other problem is, he hits like a truck, and getting everybody healed up in time is gonna be a major issue. And on top of that, let me actually get you brawl, so you get the extra strength and caution. I'm gonna give her the fire bow, because this actually deals fire damage, so he's weak to fire. The problem with fire bows is they only have 70% accuracy. So it's not that great. I'm actually gonna save this on a different save file. And then I think I want to actually have Bonk and Ferris be berserkers. So they hit even harder if they hit. Well. Yeah. If uh, Biblos also does have like a good chunk of evasion, so the reduced accuracy of the bow as well as the axes that I'm going to be using as a berserker is going to be even more reduced. But I hope it will be made up by them just hitting a lot harder individually. Because once Biblos drops below, what is it, 800 HP? Man, I don't know my numbers anymore. Once Biblos drops below, let's see... Oh yeah, it is actually below 800 HP. He has a 2 in 3 chance to cast Drain. And Drain is ridiculously broken in terms of how powerful it is this early in the game. Like, it's just stupid strong. That's the short version. Let's see... I'm gonna equip plume hats on everybody, instead of the mithra hats. So these have less physical defense, but more magic defense. Except the ribbon. The ribbon gives you plus 5 to all stats, which is great. Unfortunately, you don't actually get the additional vitality added, or like the health added. So let's see how this is gonna go. This is gonna be luck either way. Do you have any way to remove statuses that persist outside of battle, besides full heal locations? I don't think I do. Unless I'm missing something, I do not. Alright, welcome to Blibl Biblos. This highest 3600 HP. Magic hammer? Halves my current magic, but it doesn't matter. We hit 820. That's real good damage, actually. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna wait with Galaf here. 360. Pretty good. And we got lucky that he didn't cast armor so far. So this is why I'm keeping my turn with Galuf. So I can heal as soon as he attacks. Unfortunately we missed this time. Magic hammer? That's basically perfect. You could keep doing this, I do not mind. 666 damage. I was hoping that it wouldn't be Galuf that goes next. I should have healed Bonker or Ferris, they have actually slightly more max, max HP than Knights. 
840. Oh my goodness. We only need to deal a thousand more damage. Wind Slash is the big attack that I'm most worried about. 522. Train. There's the problem. 360. Still more damage than Train does. But we have one less character. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna heal Lena. She's the most important here. She can deal the most damage. Perfect, thank you very much. He can wind slash every other turn. Attack before no. Okay. <laughs> wow. Like this looked easy. But this was really, really good luck. Like he just kept using magic hammer and dealing no damage. This was a very lucky fight. I don't think it's absurd to try and go for a lucky fight like this. But I didn't expect to get it first try. That's the short version right there. Those berserkers came through and he didn't even cast armor once. Every time we hit him, he had I think a 1 in 3 chance to cast armor. So that is just ridiculously good luck. We can still get attacked by enemies here by the way. Um, I'm just gonna stick to my characters so I can heal too. Can you use passives too? Yes, we can use passives and equipment in any capacity. I just can't use the magic or item menu anywhere. Or abilities in combat, for that matter. So, I couldn't even demonstrate on how strong Biblos normally is because we just got lucky with the damage, I guess. No, you are can you? Welcome to you, I hope you're doing well. Yeah, those berserkers definitely came through. Bit unexpected. But not unwelcome. Alrighty. Um, let me revive you real quick, and then I probably should start figuring out, like, the final setup for my characters. I think just Mastering Knight is probably fine. For HP and Strength on these two characters. You know, in hindsight, I should have switched over. Actually, no, okay. I feel like I should have switched over to Mystic Knights and stuff Knights a while ago. Because the passive of just getting Shell is quite amazing. They don't lose that much strength. They do lose a bit of strength. I don't know, I'm just kind of winging it. Let's just actually do both. Here, we go with Bonk, it's just gonna be a knight. And Ferris is gonna be a Mystic Knight. With double grip. Mystic Knights cannot equip all the swords that regular knights can equip. Because they are knight exclusive swords, specifically the Brave Blade for example. But Mystic Knights have like really good agility. They have 48, uh, 38 baseline agility. Plus 3 from Ferris. They have decent strength and decent vitality. So honestly, it feels like level or mastering a Mystic Knight is actually kind of a good choice here. Oh, wave wave, I look her. Yeah, I'm gonna go with one Knight, one Mystic Knight. And I think the plan will be for Ferris to just master Mystic Knight. Just because that will tell me in the end whether this might have been worth it or not. We'll see. For Galaf, I think I do want him to be starting to become a ninja. Actually, no, before ninja. Maybe continue with Monk first? How much more does he need for Monk? Where is Monk? Here it is. Okay, this goes gonna take a while. I mean, Ninja's agility is really good. The same as Mystic Knights, by the way. How much vitality does a ninja have? 
Oh, I can even like, equip Brawl on you for more strength. Let me actually check your strength before I do this. You have baseline 43 strength, which is actually really good. Brawl is not going to improve that by much, but it would improve it a little bit. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to stop waving now. <laughs> Thank you, Valakar. Mystic Knight has the stats the Red Mage wishes they got? Yes. I agree. Um... Yeah, Galaf is going to master Ninja, regardless of what else I do. I can decide to master Monk in the end, but this is gonna be Galaf's situation here for now. Get an Elf Cape, Training Suit, and you're gonna be Ninja for a while. Lena! What have you been for the most part? You have been... I've been mastering the for the most part. Maybe I'm just gonna turn you into a Mystic Knight as well. Now that I think about it, instead of having to master a magic drop class, I can just equip the magic power via like level 1 or 2 magic of the specific class. It's not gonna be as good as mastering it, but it actually is just going to add it, and it's not like I need the other commands, generally speaking. Doesn't Monk give the most HP to Freelancer? Yes, most HP and strength. Let's see... Thief and Berserker is just going to give her a lot of strength and vitality. I go that route. I'm just gonna go Berserker with you instead. It just feels like Mystic Knight is the better choice. Yeah, I'm gonna go Mystic Knight. With caution so we don't get back attacked. Okay, Mystic Knight is my choice here. Mystic Knight is just really, really good all, all around. The passive of act activating Shell is going to be extremely handy, I think. And they can use two-handed. Well, not if I need to use Caution, I guess. For max stats it was Monk Summoner Thief. Yes, actually, I think that sounds about right. I'm not gonna master Summoner, but I might get, like, one Summoner level or ability point, I guess. Just because this might give me the most magic power. Like, for magic power, I think I'm just gonna go with whatever is the quickest slash most efficient at the time. That's assuming I will master Ninja, which I think I have to anyways for getting dual wield. I think dual wield is the last ability regardless. I'm actually not entirely sure about that. Let's see... Um, transferring stats. No, apparently Magic Sword transfers magic power from the Mystic Knight. I didn't even realize that. What's your magic power on as a Mystic Knight? Mystic Knights have a magic baseline power of... 25! Wait. That's basically nothing. <laughs> But I guess it technically slightly elevates uh, Berserker and Monk's magic stat. Very slightly. So that doesn't do anything. Let's see, dimensional magic. For summoner it is 5 minus summoner level times 4. I think level 1 summoner might be the best one for... Magic power. I should make a spreadsheet for that.
If I had a second boomerang, Galif could sit in the back row and give Ferris the Guardian Burger. Wait, not Ferris, Lena. Characters might get some white mage levels anyways from healing stuff. Yes, Galif already has one, that is true. So it actually might just be more pragmatic to go for like magic levels in the end. Because they already will have some ability points. How much magic does White Mage give? 49? Yeah, 49. Let's see. Mastering Mystic Knight would give really good, basically all around really good melee stats. Plus a fantastic passive. I think it is actually strictly better than Knight. I kind of wish I thought of this earlier. Like it is strictly better than Knight unless I want to maximize my stats, but I just want to beat the game. So I feel like it makes more sense to turn Bonk into Mystic Knight as well. I mean, once I got two-handed from the Knight, I should have turned them into Mystic Knights. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I genuinely feel like this is the correct way to go. We have need jump. Actually, I will be missing out on some of the Knight Exclusive Swords, but for those I will have to go for the Knight Class regardless. Do I need to worry about Inns right now? I don't think I do. We're going to say this sounds kind of easy until there are no items slash magic outside of battle part, right? Because technically, just the inside battle part I've done already. I have done a four berserker run before. So I figured might as well try to spice it up just a little bit. Thank you. 
Alrighty, welcome to the boat ride. I'm gonna save before I do anything. I don't think the enemies on the boat are particularly dangerous, but I'm gonna stick to the right side here. And the reason for this is actually quite simple. This area right around here... Is it here? Hold up. Roman. Yeah, this area here is actually just south of the beginning starting area. Right here, up there is the beginning town. Which means these waters here in this little part of the map actually do not have encounters whatsoever. So sticking to the right hand side here actually reduce the amount of encounters I could possibly get because they just don't have any in that specific part of the map. That kind of extends to the other waters too because it's all based on like big squares tiles on the map. My fingers wanted to go to the LNR button already again. The hacking shouldn't be too difficult. Oh wait, do I need to go and just buy the weapon? I guess I can do this with the Black Dakobo. I wonder how much money I have by selling stuff. We'll see. We gained some levels. I think overall this should easily be enough to complete World 1. The big question is whether I need to prepare anything for World 2. World 2 is where the boss fights start getting a fair bit more dangerous. So these guys here have a good chunk of evasion, but thanks to the daggers, we should have a decent chance to hit. And they have like, what, 20 HP? It's actually really not that much. They are just really fast and have a good chunk of evasion, that's it. I could give Galaf counter, I guess. As long as I don't need the maximum HP on Galuf, counter is actually better. So whenever he gets hit by a physical attack, he will counter attack. Still gonna give him the elf cape though. Actually there's a, there would be one benefit to mastering knight, and that is the cover passive. Where if an ally is on low HP, and they were about to get hit by a regular physical attack, the knight would cover for that low HP ally. But I don't think I can reliably set this up against so many bosses that actually just use magic and bypass that mechanic. This is not briefly default to where you can block magic for allies. Or even AoE. Oh yeah, I forgot my timer. Uh, let's see. Been streaming for what? One and a half hours plus what? Three and a half hours? It's actually less than three and a half, like 3.13. So 4.45 I think would be approximately the timer here. <laughs> Run invalid reset. Maybe. Is there any reason for me to pick up an armor here? Or a weapon for that matter. I do have three, four plume pads. Bark's clothes are good, like, majorly clothes, I guess. Are there actually any betters I can get? I don't think there might be, so for when I turn Galif into a white mage, this might be my best choice. But it's not like I'm lacking money in any capacity. I mostly can't use it. So the big question is, ice damage I can't get otherwise aside from ice bows right now. 
Thunder, I'm actually gonna get a bunch of swords in this short while here. Is there any reason for me to pick fire and ice bows here? Uh, let's see. There's like Adam and Timmy come out, coming up that is weak to ice, but I'm not sure that is worthwhile to worry about. He does hit pretty hard. Oh, you know what? Equipped shield could also theoretically be helpful on the white mage, but I... Wait, hold up. Before I do that. My brain is just going way too fast for now. You don't have equip shield yet, do you? But you do have equip shield. Okay, so we can already equip shield on you. If we need a shield on a white mage, for example, which probably would increase survivability against bosses like Adam and Timmy a lot. Yeah, that will make sense. Aside from that... Sandworm is always in the back row, so theoretically it would be good to have ranged weapons, but... I don't think this is gonna be too worthwhile. Lightning we have... There's not really anything else in the future that I would want to get. Alrighty, I think this is fine. I don't feel like I will want to have an ice bow. Actually, maybe one ice bow for Timmy could be useful. Yeah, might as well just buy one. Okay, but I need to go briefly to the bathroom, everybody, so I will be right back. Quick break.
Alrighty, I'm back. Hello everybody. It's kind of funny that I remembered the timer just before... I got the next part. Actually, no. Now that I think about it... Maybe there is value in having you be Berserker. Just so I have somebody with equip access. But then again, I can just equip access on a freelancer. So there doesn't seem to be any downside to that. Speaking of which... I think a Doom Axe could help a lot against a variety of bosses coming up, so maybe it makes sense to just go and grab a Doom Axe. Or a Doom Sickle, whatever you want to call it. Alrighty. Specifically, these Crescent guys here have a 1 in 16 chance to drop us a Doom Sickle, which, well, is a weapon that has a 1 in 3 chance, I think, to cast Doom whenever you're attacking and hitting an enemy with it. It is by far the best axe type weapon that you can get for a really, really, really long time in this game. But, well, you need to get it. Oh, wait! I needed to kill the Bio Soldier first because they're gonna counterattack now. With Bio. And that hits like a truck because that's a later level spell. And even though they don't have the most magic power of any enemy... Oh, this is gonna hit twice, isn't it? They're still gonna hit like a truck. This is bad. I hope I save. Okay, we survived. Wow. <laughs> oh dear. Thank you. Alrighty, I will have Galuf attack the guy in the back. Because he does have a ranged weapon with the boom rank that will hit pretty well over there. And you don't want to leave the bio soldiers for last, that is a bad idea. I wonder that it would be better to go for the other encounters with the weird dark element walls in there. They would be more annoying to hit, but at least we could get two present enemies at a time instead of just one.
I guess then I wouldn't be able to get healing as easily, though, because I would be put away from it, though. Oh, we have this encounter here anyway, so... This is fine. I'm gonna use the people with the daggers to try and hit the black flame enemies. They have very low HP, it's like 200 or something like that. But they have really high evasion, so daggers have an increased chance to hit them. Which is going to help. Two times a 1 in 16 chance? Didn't get it. You know, I just realized. It still would make more sense to go and get my new swords right now, because they would actually hit a bit harder. Okay, so this is also where we unlock Hunter and Bard. Hunter feels like it might have some potential. Especially if I use a bow, I guess. Because they have decent baseline strength and agility stats. Here it is here, alright. But before that, we need to get over to the other city, a bit further to the west here. There is a cave that we're passing by where we could theoretically get a thunder whip. But the thunder whip actually is not thunder element, unfortunately. It just has a slight chance, like a 1 in 3 chance to cast lightning 1. Whenever you're attacking, so it's not that crazy good at it, fortunately. It's not useless either. If you have a Beastmaster, it's basically your best weapon for quite a while. Although it does not have the ability to paralyze enemies, which is kind of a big downside compared to regular whips. Because being able to paralyze enemies is great. Uh oh, this is the encounter I was afraid of. Because two bio soldiers means that we're gonna uh oh hit one of them and get counterattacked. Okay. Maybe we'll make it to the town before another one. Uh oh, <laughs> we didn't. Okay, it is not two more bio soldiers. We're good.
So in this town here, we can buy some green berets, which are really good, but even better are the stealth ropes. The same defense as the uh, mithril armor, but much lighter, which does make a difference. As well as... Plus one agility. So effectively our characters just get faster because they don't have as much equipment weight. Because every eight equipment weight you lose one agility in terms of speed stat. And... By the way, if you play the Pixel Remaster, it's actually every single equipment weight you lose one speed stat. It's actually pretty extreme. Heavy armor is even worse than it already is in this game. But the main reason why I came here is to buy Coral Swords. These things have a lightning base attack. Let me actually just get four. Mage Masters have a 1 in 4 chance, I think. Was it 1 in 4? I think last time I was wrong about that. Let me check real quick. Mage Masher. Oh, it's actually a 1 in 3 chance to attack with an attack that can inflict silence. So 1 in 3 chance to cast silence on an enemy. Let me get three of those. Trident is a spear type weapon that also deals lightning damage, but for all intents and purposes, it's strictly worse than the Coral Sword, plus our current classes can't equip it anyways. Katana is actually the weapon we had since basically a long time, which that thing is really good, but uh, only Freelancer at this point could equip it. Alright, let me just sell a bunch of things that I don't have any use for. See how much money I have left over. This looks overall quite fine, I guess. So, here we go. Stealth rope for you. Stealth rope for you. Coral sword and stealth rope for you. Gonna sell the heavy armor for the metro. With silver plates, because those are just strictly worse. I don't think I need the Mythical Hammers anymore, either. Alright, nice. We have new armor for everybody, as well as new weapons that are lightning-based. So as long as there's no lightning-immune enemies, we're good to go to use those. Which, well, should be fine. But if their enemies are weak to lightning, these are much better. Plus, they actually are, well, higher baseline damage. So even if the enemies are not weak to lightning, it's better than using Mithril Swords. I was wondering, wait, why does Lena deal so little damage? Oh yeah, she does not have two handed. <laughs> she has the caution so we don't get back attacked. Oh yeah, fun fact, the ninja has another passive that increases your chance of getting preemptive strikes. So, that can be mildly helpful. What is the ideal job setup for this endgame? I'm actually not sure, it kind of depends on whether dual wielding healing staves actually works or not. But my plan is to have somebody get dual wield from the ninja, and then equip two healing staves, which means they're probably going to be a freelancer, but they also will want to have some magic power, which is most likely going to be Galuf and just equipping light magic, even though he can't use light magic, it's still going to increase his magic power, so the healing staves are going to heal more. Ow. So the healer is basically Galuf with two healing staves. Then for damage, well since I can't run away in combat since that's a different kind of command, sorta. Of, I will get the Brave Blade, so somebody's gonna two-hand that thing. Not sure who yet.
And then for the other two, I'm actually really not sure yet. Somebody equipping a dragon whisker would be great, but I cannot really reliably get a dragon whisker. Wait a sec. Hold up, there is value in me grabbing the chicken knife instead, because I can run away from encounters if I just only attack with a chicken knife. Right? It's gonna power up very slowly, but theoretically I can use the chicken knife to run away. Where am I going? Oh yeah, right, the desert. Hmm. Honestly, chicken knife is a very strong consideration because if I dual wield a lancet plus chicken knife. It's never, never actually going to run away when I don't want it to for damage purposes, but powering it up would just take a really long time. So I might just still be better to use Brave Blade instead. It's going to cut into your DPS in boss fights, yeah. Normally it will. If I have a specific weapon for ninjas and thieves equipped, that is... what is it called? The Double Lance. The Double Lance actually has... the way it's programmed, it's basically a 100% chance to proc the second attack. And because you can only proc one attack at a time, the Double Lance effectively prevents the Chicken Knife from ever having you try to run away, if you have the Chicken Knife in your offhand. And you don't do any damage aside from the double land spell. It attacks twice, so it's actually strictly better than even late game weapons for the most part. Especially against high, uh, lower defense enemies. Recent played the Pixel Remaster, which removed that exploit? Yeah. Pixel Remaster changed up a lot of things, or I guess more specifically, it just didn't re implement the old stuff. Which I think is perfectly fine. The one thing I miss, and the reason why I prefer the old version over the Pixel Remaster, is that little pause you get when you're getting a turn in combat. Every time I get a turn in combat, there's like a little brief pause in the ATB bar. That's kind of redundant word. In the ATB in the bottom right. And this gives me a little bit of time to select my commander action before the battle timer continues. And that just doesn't exist in the Pixel Remaster at all, like it never pauses, ever. And it's kind of, honestly, annoying for me because I'm so used to this one. Even if I don't think it's inherently bad, I just miss it. You got the Final Fantasy Anniversary Edition on PSP and got lost constantly because of the random fights. Oh yeah, if you don't know where you're going, basically getting interrupted by random fights does not help your case. Alrighty, welcome to Sandworm. Fun fact, this thing is always sitting in the back row, so what I should have done is equipped Lena with a bow or something like that. That's too late now. Uh, it is actually not weak against any element in particular, but Aqua Breath would deal 8 times damage, ignoring its defense. So effectively one-shotting it in most cases. But I can only attack. So this guy is always considered to be sitting in the back row, which means my melee attacks are going to deal half damage, unless I'm using the Boomerang. From Galaf here. Which deals full damage. But he only has 3000 HP. And we are quite over leveled here, so it should not be that bad. I was considering turning somebody into a healer briefly, but I also really don't think it's all that necessary.
So even here in the front, it is considered to be in the back row, so melee damage is half. In briefly default, they let you turn up and down random battles, yeah, which is really nice. Like that one downside, letting you turn up and down random battles, is that it kind of removes the sense of sense of danger for like later game dungeons where you need to have like proper resources and the regular enemies encounters are really dangerous. So you need to handle them properly. But the big upside is, of course, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to be constantly interrupted by just random stuff coming your way and then you losing where you were or what you were doing at the time. I don't have an example, but I think it's especially egregious if there's random encounters in areas where you're trying to do a puzzle. And then you just get interrupted and then you may not remember where you were in the puzzle. It just means that you control when you grind. To an extent, it can mean that, yes. I agree. But the problem for me is, and that's just the me problem, with the game allowing you to change the random encounter rate, is my brain automatically will go for, oh, is it efficient to defeat enemies here or grind? Or do I just want to explore first and do any other things? And I'm just going to try and min-max automatically. So I just tend to not change the encounter rate in games because of that. Because once I begin, my brain automatically tries to optimize, which I think in the long run makes it less interesting for me. Even though initially it would be kind of neat. a long time throwing phoenix stones and under to instantly kill them. That's a great method. Works really well, especially Final Fantasy VI, I think. Has like some particularly good places for that. Or revives, yes. Final Fantasy VI you can use the zombie curing status item, which is much much cheaper. What's it called? I forget. I've never actually played the Bravely Default 1. I've only played Bravely Default 2. But I really like it. What is that? Revivify, there we go, that one. Hictrasil leaves to level on undeads. Oh, that's expensive and has a casting time. And your chance of success might not be the greatest, but. It's a ton of experience every time you kill a kill. Especially on Anubis. Mastering the chicken knife without manually running is going to take a long time, even if you take everyone else's weapon off. Yes. Absolutely. I don't think it would be worth it. So I'm probably still going to stick to the bra uh, Brave Blade, but I do think there's value in picking the Chicken Knife in this kind of run still. You're 100% Bravely Default, but you couldn't get yourself to bra play Bravely Second or Bravely Default 2. Interesting. I don't know anything about Bravely Second either. I just haven't played the DS games, I guess. Uh-oh. 
Good morning, welcome to Yukesura. I hope you're doing well. What's in the box? Uh, I see cables, I see chewed up toys, I see some wallets here. Do rabbits spit out things like cats do hairballs? I mean, it's just a wallet. A little bit of slobber on it. I don't know whose it is. What else is in the food box? A bunch of shoes. There's a box. It's a food box. I guess I'm in the food box too. value in me picking up stuff from the south room. The two shurikens, a spell. I think that's it. No. no. Forks are parents, not photo. That does m not make any sense for anybody who can't see the chat right now. <laughs> there we go. For forks are firens, not for photo. There we go. <laughs> oh dear. That's fine. Either way, welcome to this next boss. This poor guy only has 2000 HP. A weakness to lightning. I have lightning weapons equipped on almost everybody. And... Let's put it this way. I think two attacks will do the trick. He does have a lot of chunk of physical defense. But... Oh, actually. It is three attacks, I guess. That we need it. Now it makes sense. Right. It's about the delicious forks. By the way, for the Secret of Mana 100% run, I'm still looking for name suggestions for the characters. Because I kind of forgot about the names entirely pretty much every year until now. So I feel like maybe some people have some interesting suggestions. I kind of like the name for the sprite to be Gremlin, but it's not set in stone. Plus, usually people see to suggest the names in triplets. Go too far south? I did go too far south. No. Oh, one very nice change or quality of life change is in the Pixel Remaster, you have like a range where you can enter this landing pad. You don't have to be specifically on it, so it makes it a bit easy to actually land on it. I'm used to it by now. But occasionally I still miss it.
Alright. I think it's time for me to get the death sickle now. Because I just remembered that the original reason why I went to go and grab the lightning swords first was because I wanted to... Oh hey, that's a good encounter. The original reason why I went to get lightning swords first is because... So I would deal more damage to these enemies here. Since they have slightly by higher base damage. Although not enough to two-shot the twin list. They have a lot of defense. But yeah, a doom sickle would be fantastic. It's not an icicle, it's a doom sickle. Hit this guy first. We just always want to knock out the bio soldier before he is the last one remaining. Since if he is the last one remaining, he'll just counterattack with bio, dealing about 250 to 300 damage to everybody in the party. It hits like a truck. So once again, the Doom Scythe is a 1 in 16 chance to drop from these crescent enemies, the ones with the little sickles in their hands. Oh wow, Fairies actually hit that thing. Hitting with the swords is so much less likely. Oh, there is one. Nice. That's lucky. I think we are just about at... Actually, no, we are just about at the drop rate. So it's about the expected number of kills. It just feels lucky. Okay, I could go and heal up to full, but is it all that necessary? Maybe. Let's see. So, upcoming is going to be another boss here that only ever attacks with physical attacks. So what I want to do is... I want to equip a Brawl on you, as well as... Actually, none of the other things really matter. With the Doom Sickle, as well as giving you one of the Elfin Capes. Because with this, she has really good chance to evade attacks and this Doom Axe has a 1 in 3 chance to cast Doom, which enemies can get instantly killed by if they are susceptible, and this upcoming boss is susceptible to it. However, even if we get the 1 in 3 chance to cast Doom, it still has like, I don't know, a 60-70% chance to resist it anyways. So the chance of one-shot killing it are not that great, but the good thing about the Axes are they do pierce defense. And this thing does have really good or high attack power, so this actually makes a lot of sense to use, even as just a weapon anyways. Um, I'm gonna turn Galaf into a white mage here, so once again, he can just heal. In the back row. Let's just see whether I even need to... heal up beforehand, because we're missing a few HP, but Adam and Timmy, while he does basically take half damage from all sources, because he starts with armor and shell spells active at any at the beginning of battle. He only has 2000 HP. And we do hit it decently hard, I guess. Save a fork. Hey, don't lose our Vulcan. I hope you're doing well. Alrighty, let's see. Just attack. Normally, this guy is also weak to ice, by the way. Forgot about that part. I should have turned somebody into a knight. Alright. 
So Adam and Timmy is very simple in the AI. It attacks twice, then it attacks once. And that's all it does. Unfortunately, it does appear to be faster than Gallop, so... Here's that. Didn't get any procs yet. Heal, please. It's gonna be two attacks again. It does hit pretty hard with its physical attack, so... I think turning Gallop into a healer was the correct choice here. No one in three chance yet. Nice dodge. Also, of all the axes, axes generally speaking have the chance to miss. But the Doom X, I think, only has like a 10% chance to miss, so it is much more accurate than basically any other. So much nicer. And we didn't get any procs, but the damage was just about enough. Good job, guys. Did not need to go and heal. Man, I still kind of want you to be a Berserker, not gonna lie, especially now that I have to do Max. I think I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna turn you into Berserker. Because it's so much more maximum HP if you master it, and Berserker is one of the classes that you master sooner rather than later, in a sense. Yeah, this is fine. Alright, Gallop, thank you for healing. Let's go back to Ninja. With Counter or Brawl? Brawl gives you a little bit more straight up damage. Counter allows you to, you know, counter. Actually, Brawl is probably better. It's more reliably useful, anyways. Because if you think about it, Counter is a very specific that Gallop needs to get hit by specifically for physical attack and then. He needs to actually counter 2, which is a 50% chance, so effectively 1 in 8 chance to get hit. That's assuming the enemy only ever attacks with physical hits, which, well, especially against bosses, reasonably rare. Although we could cheese Arcure Avis by just having monks countering. Should I do that? I specifically don't want to use the Underflow glitch, because... I think that would make it too easy. But... I think we get a full heal from this cutscene, if I'm not mistaken. And we're off. Oh, actually, Berserker does have another use in this scenario coming up here. In fact, I shouldn't have bothered turning Galuff into a regular character here either. HP plus 10% actually does not help really either. I don't want counter if I give you a healing rod. Either way, it shouldn't be too difficult. We can, however, get unlucky. Alright, welcome to the mini bosses before the big boss. This is either a flamer or it is. it is a flamer. They are weak to lightning. 
have about two and a half thousand HP. Or 2,400, I guess. And all they do is cast Emission, which is fire-based damage. Not that much, and we will easily be able to heal it. So this is my preferred encounter of the two that we can possibly get uh, whenever we encounter these flame gun enemies. Or, well, the mini-bosses on the side. In the Pixel Remaster, I think you always get two flame guns encounters and two launcher encounters, but I'm not sure. This one here is just random. And we got more flame guns. Very good. This might not be enough damage. It is enough damage. So the other encounter that they can get into is launchers, and they basically have two attacks. One is missile, reducing my current HP by 75%, so that's actually a lot of damage taken. But it's never going to kill you because it's current HP, not maximum HP. And the other attack they can use are rocket punch, and that is the dangerous one. Okay, more flamers. Lucky. Rocket Punch reduces your current HP by 50%, so not as dramatic as Missile. But, oh, oops. But more importantly... More importantly... They also confuse the character, and wow, I got lucky. I don't mind, that's one bit. Since Seven Sins and BGT are going to do two runs, will I join them for both? Maybe? I honestly don't know. Definitely for their first one. That's the Secret of Mana Fortress. Anything that's floating is the Secret of Mana Fortress. Even the one in Lufia. Or Final Fantasy VI. It's always the fortress. Kinda wish the music would play here. Either way. We got lucky with the encounters there, so that's nice. So let me go and heal back up to full. But here, actually, I don't want Lena as a Berserker. It was actually interesting because Berserkers cannot be confused. Confused characters either cast healing or supportive spells on enemies or attack your characters with regular attacks. I can unconfuse my characters. It's one of the few status effects I can cure by attacking them. It even works with attacking with the healing rod, so that's nice. But here I definitely want to have somebody who can equip the sword. Somebody who is fast enough anyways. Okay, I'm gonna actually remove the elf cape from you. And give it to you instead. You want the plumed hat for magic evasion, plumed hat for magic evasion. Alright. This doesn't matter. Alrighty, the upcoming boss itself is going to be weak to lightning. Kinda like the other guy, but it has 12,500 HP basically. So it's a lot more HP and it attacks every so often for an attack that deals 50% of your maximum health in damage and inflicts HP leak status, which means you continuously lose more HP afterwards on top of it. So it is actually a pretty devastating attack because it also hits your entire party if you can't heal. But we can heal thanks to the healing stuff. But the reason why I don't want the Berserker in this encounter here is there's two minions in the back, the little rocket launchers. And these things have a launcher attack that deals 50% of my current health and damage. Let's just see whether this knocks them out. Oh, I think this knocks them out. There we go. These things deal 50% of the current health and damage, which isn't a bad deal. The bad part is, okay, it's, it's got it, that's fine. 
uh, is that it inflicts the old status. As you can see, Gallus Heart here just went grey. And this means he continually loses stats. All the stats. So I absolutely want to kill these things before they can do more. But they only have 800 HP, so we are done with this thing for now. Basically, my characters would lose speed, they will lose attack damage, they lose all sorts of things. Let's put it this way, just to get something else. And it's honestly very, very significant on how much damage and attack power you lose. So I did not want to ha have them hit anything. You can resist that attack by having a chance to magic evade. Which is why I gave everybody the plume hats, because they give a 5% extra chance to resist, which is not much, but... Oh well. Now that basically my main damage dealers are not affected by it, and while the little launchers are already gone, we're good. Because this thing does not attack for quite a long time. Once uh, energy level reaches 128%, that is when it will unleash its attack. But we might actually be able to knock it out before it even gets a second attack in. I'm just gonna briefly wait. Heal Ferris here. I usually tend to heal Ferris because she has the highest agility, so she gets the most turns in. So keeping her alive is usually more relevant, I guess. And that's it already. I did not need to worry about this one bit, it appears. Magic level 2 on Galath. Do you lose levels? No, actually, the enemies lose levels if they are inflicted with the aging status, but your characters only lose stats. Alright, back to Ninja Galath. We have Brawl for extra damage. It is fine. Um, Mystic Knight Lena or Berserker Lena. I don't know, I just kind of like the idea of her just going Berserk. Caution so we don't get back attacks. And that's fine. Oh, by the way, the Elf Caves also give you a slight increased chance of evading magic attacks if they have a chance to hit, which the launcher attacks did do. Which is why I gave it to one of my two main damage dealers. Did you go back for the elf keep behind the Garki Mazra? No. I think with the Doom Axe I would be able to knock it out if I ever hit it. So I could theoretically go back for it. Would that be worthwhile right now? I mean, we can try. Right? Might as well keep Galaf as a Might Mage in that case though. Actually, no, not Galaf. I'm gonna keep you as a white mage briefly, with equipped shields, which I think makes the most sense. We wanna get you all into the back row. Yeah, sure, actually, that's a good idea. Let's try to get that elf cape. Um, did I actually sell the... I did sell the other ones. I kind of want to just grab the mithril hammers. Because at least we have a chance to hit. Wait. This thing has a chance to berserk whenever you counterattack, so maybe I shouldn't have a mage on me. Because I'm gonna heal it. Yeah, in hindsight, I don't think I should have a mage. Let me grab two more mithril hammers. Actually, three. Let's just go in with a full party of berserkers. Double grip. You don't have double grip, but you can use counter. Double grip on you, and Gallop, you actually need to use the Mithril Hammer. The Mithril Hammer, kind of like all axes and hammers, have a chance to... Actually, no, dig. Ignore three quarters of the enemy's defense. And this thing has too much defense for any of my other regular weapons to ever deal damage. So they are kind of required. But the problem is the chance to hit. That thing has a ton of evasion. 
Actually, how much evasion do you have? Garkimasra has... Oh, only 50% evasion, actually. That is worse than I thought it was gonna be. Like, I thought it had like 80%, but it's only 50% chance to evade. And yes, I cannot get the elf cape here anymore. If I go towards to... But it makes sense to just do this right now. Plus, after the fortress, I think Galaf is gone anyways, which would make it a bit more difficult. Okay, the big downside of Berserkers is they are slow. Wait, I just realized it doesn't make sense for you to have the Doom Axe. I should have it on one of the cactus that actually double step the attack power. Because I'm pretty sure this thing is immune to getting doomed. So the Doom Axe actually is just there to deal straight up draw damage. Which makes more sense with double grip. Alright, let's see. Also, hands off, I can't do anything. You just counterattack? I think you just counterattacked. Nice, immediate hit. Moonflute would. Wow, okay. Ferris decides to just one shot the thing. <laughs> Holy moly. Um, can't heal. Moonflute would berserk your entire party. This is why I don't have a healer, by the way. Wow, you hit. And it always does that as a counterattack. Okay! You guys even one shot even without the uh, Doom Sickle. I'm impressed. Okay, there we go. Elf Cape acquired. Give it to Ferris. One in three chance to dodge incoming physical attacks. And a slightly better agility val value. I did not expect this to be this easy. I could have done this way earlier in this case, I guess. Yeah, this is kind of more what I expect. Mostly missing. Nice. Alrighty. I thought this would be a lot more difficult. Ow. Well, my Doomsickle user is almost dead. Just one more hit, guys. Anybody hitting is gonna be fine. Okay, that was pretty successful, I will say. We got the accessory. This is one of the best accessories, especially early in the game. With a 1 in 3 chance to just dodge enemy attacks. It's amazing. Alright, back to double grip here. And back to double grip as a Mystic Knight. <laughs> Back to ninjaing. And brawl for dealing damage. And. Hey, you just stay berserker, this is fine. Alrighty. Gotta give you an elf cape, and that's fine. The game still prioritizes anything that even gives one defense over the Elf Cape, because the Elf Cape gives no defense, and the game only checks for physical defense to see what it should automatically equip. Okie dokie. Nice. You remember safe stating after every step to get that cape? Well, if you try to do it early, you better have a thief or flea in your party. Then it's trivial. But without an auto run ability, like flea and preventing back attacks, it's. This thing is r rude. Attack only? <laughs> nice, you know. Oh my guess, thank you so much for the raid, and welcome everybody. Welcome to just about to enter... Ronka. Or Lonka? 
It doesn't matter. One or the other. The, we are allowed to only use attacks. I cannot use heals in and outside of combat with magic or items. So what I have is what I get. So maybe I actually should be having the healer right now. It'll be fine. With long time. By the way, thank you so much, Magus, for the raid, and welcome, everybody. By the way, if you like... Oh, by the way, this does include I cannot run. Oh my goodness, the chance to miss on these guys. They also have really good defense and a thousand HP, so they're gonna hit like a truck. Thanks, Lena. By the way, if you guys like Might and Magic, or Magus is currently doing the Month of Might and Magic, the Mighty Month of Might and Magic, and it's great. Well, I think Magus mostly plays through 6, 7, 8, and right now X. Which... I think X is still not done. Oh, I forgot these things are weak to lightning. That is actually somewhat useful. Get a gold armor for physical defense. Which reminds me, everybody should have the stealth thrower equipped, because that's just better. Gold armor does have more physical defense than the stealth rope, but it's hardly worth it with how heavy it and slow it makes you. It's an elixir, and the ninja rope has plus one agility. Oh my goodness, guys. The mighty mult of might and magic. Nice. Lena is swinging that scythe really well, except just she hasn't gotten a single Doom proc so far, so that's a bit of a shame. Error 2, it's more damage. I should definitely switch somebody back to being a healer for now. There we go, she hurt me. Good job, Lena. Thank you. Alrighty, I think it makes the most sense to turn one of the Mystic Knights into a healer for now, so I can also equip shield with you. Put you in the background, just start healing. So this is a safe point I pretty much never use, because it's not that far into the ruins, why would you use it? But with not being able to heal, this could be kind of relevant. That's a phoenix down I can't use, but it's 500 monies. Over here there is a gold shield, which is 30% physical defense rather than 25% as a mythical shield. And, well, I might as well grab it. There we go. Give it to my trusty... Light Mage here. The magical month of... Magical mighty month of my magic. Also I can't heal if... Bonk never gets a turn. Then again, if Bonk never gets a turn, that's not technically bad, because that means the enemies died before he had to do anything. Nice block. And the other guy decided to do nothing. And then apparently also decided to do nothing. It all evens out, that's okay. I actually don't know my maximum HP, so I don't know who may need healing. Alright, it was not Bonk. Bonk was full. Oh no, Bonk was not full HP. Now you're full HP. Bye, Toadie. Thank you for the heals. This went way better than expected. Out of that trip, I basically got more HP. Well, maybe I'm talking too early. I think what I should do here is I should just wait until the world demon attacks and then heal whoever. Oh, takes damage. Well, everybody takes damage.
You know what I was just thinking of? A minute character with a shield and cover could be really good to help against physical attacks in the end game. This is blocking for all allies. Well, when they're low in HP anyways. That's a high potion I can't use. By the way, everybody, I'm still looking for Secret of Mana name suggestions for the 100% run that is gonna happen at New Year's, or 100% but 99. 100.99% run. Don't go down there, Yanga. It's not allowed. Pretty sure Ferris should knock this thing out in one hit anyways. Can you suggest random prim Papoy? You can, actually. Uh, I'm gonna hit you, so you're not gonna hit me. Confused Cactus, you get unconfused by hitting them with uh, healing stuff. It was not necessary, I could have healed instead, but I actually wasn't sure. So here, the most important item we get is the Ancient Sword, because this thing hits much harder than the Coral Sword, and it can inflict the aging status, meaning the enemy is going to continuously lose speed. And we also get two other useful items here. The Power Ring actually has better defense than the Glasses, gives plus three strength, which is really nice, and we actually get a second full moon weapon, which means we can now put the Galuf into the back row for still dealing full damage. It is slightly worse accuracy than the daggers, but it can be real nice. Whee. What is 199% run and how do you participate? So in Secret of Mana, normally you can get all the weapons to 8.99% or level 8.99. But the sword normally go goes only to up to 8.00 because the last level or upgrade would be the mana sword that you cannot normally get in a regular playthrough. But I'm gonna use a little lich to get the mana sword early and that means I will have to get all the weapons up to 8.99. And there's actually a kind of a big problem. Sure, having a mana sword early is nice because that thing hits like a truck and it's just a fantastic weapon all around, but the big problem with having the mana sword early is going to be that I will not be able to level up at least one of my characters for a long time. Because the caveat of wanting to level up all the weapons up to 8.99 is how to put it. Because of the quirky experience formula for weapons in that game, once you reach level 8.00 and you're too high level, so no enemy in the game is higher level than you anymore, you cannot naturally level up your weapon plus level 8.00. And that's kind of a big problem if you want to get all the weapons up to 8.99. So the solution for this is to leave one character basically dead the entire run until you have all the weapon orbs, and then you start leveling up with that character, killing lower level enemies that are higher level than the characters, very slowly until all the weapons are 8.99. Meaning it's kind of going to be most of the run, the boy is just going to be dead. I don't know if it would be more efficient to leave the lady dead the entire time, but I think her support spells are just too good to pass up, even though she has less base damage than the boy. Also, hey, aging status reduces enemies' levels, which in this version largely doesn't do anything, actually. Because enemy have a static attack multiplier that is 
not calculate the base off of their current level. So consequently, they actually don't deal any less damage. If you play the Game Boy Advance version, the damage is actually dramatically reduced when they get the aging status. Here they just lose speed and levels. And the reason why you may want to reduce levels is actually kind of neat. You can do like spells that only target certain levels and hit them with them. Definitely. Good morning, Chumli. How are you doing? You missed Yaga React for the Visions of Mana trailer? I mean... I think you would have the same information as to... If you saw my reaction, as to when I didn't have a reaction. Because I didn't have much of a reaction. Because my reaction to it is just... That looks really neat. I hope it's gonna be as good as it looks. That's kind of my entire reaction to this, to be honest. It looks really nice. I hope it looks it's gonna play as nice as it looks. Am I happy? Uh not particularly much more happy, I guess. Like, in a weird kind of way, as much as I like Secret of Mana and Trials of Mana, I'm not necessarily attached to one series. It's just usually when I play, like, multiple games in a series, I just happen to know that this is the kind of game style that I like. Like Dark Souls, for example, I just really like the Dark Souls series. So, if a publisher that I think does amazing work puts out another game, then I'm usually like, ooh, this is gonna be nice. For Square Enix, it feels currently like hit or miss. It can be fantastic. And it honestly frequently is, at least in the recent years. But also, there's just kind of the catch of, well, it doesn't have to necessarily be great. Or as great as it looks. But if the Trials of Mana remake is anything to go by, I think it could be fantastic. Have you played Satan as to 1 Final Fantasy Adventure US? I have played this one, yes. It's on the Switch... thingy. I got it from there. Will I get it on day 1? Honestly, probably yes. Like, I think it looks good enough for me to just jump into it just to see what it is about. Whenever that would be. Alright everybody, upcoming is Arceo Avis and... I need an opinion here. Should I cheese this fight? Yes or no? Because we have a method of cheesing this thing. And I think it's kind of funny. We have one now, we have two cheeses. Three cheeses. Cheese is delicious. Cheese or not the cheese, what's the question? Alright. Let's do both. Most people are for cheese. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to turn everybody into bunks. You get more maximum HP. Uh, actually, I can have you be not a monk. I can have you be a freelancer, actually. This is gonna be more efficient with counter specifically. Counter and brawl. That, I think, makes a lot of sense. You're gonna be a monk. You never learned counter, that's fine. Doesn't matter what else you get. And you're gonna be a monk as well. So, the main idea here is that Archeo Avis is an interesting boss bear. It just has like five different phases, although the game doesn't tell you about most of them. But it can only trigger these phases whenever you attack the boss directly. 
so consequently... In order for the boss to trigger those phase shifts, so to speak, it has to get hit by an attack that it can counter to an extent. However, in this game you cannot counter counterattacks. So what happens if you defeat a boss that relies on phase transitions by counterattacks and if you deny that counterattack entirely? Well, I have now three characters that counter physical attacks. Oh, the only thing I can do is, by the way, just do regular attacks here. Slip is fine. This thing first four has 1600 HP. I forgot to give Galaf the Doom Max. Oh well. He also has really high physical defense. In the first areas here, so I'm just gonna wait and hope. Alright. Gonna heal you in this case. I think I can attack like once or twice more. I didn't actually keep track of the damage. But all of my attacks can crit, so it could just trigger the next phase. So all Archeavis can do is, he has a physical attack, he has a physical attack with a special effect added to it, the slip counter. Okay, good counter. And he has a spell that hits everybody for 25% of their maximum HP right now. Slip counter, there we go, the counter. Now basically, what I want to have him do is just attack my guys. This breath wing, that's unfortunate. Come on, just attack. And there's another breath wing. So in order for me to heal, I have to actually attack again. But I don't want to attack. If I kept more closely track of his HP, this would also be better. Okay, Lena is basically down. Counter. He didn't counter. And Ferris is down too. And if I don't attack here, Galaf will be down as well. Unfortunately, I think this was the phase transition just now. Wing, yeah, it's phase transition now. Alright, 242 damage. Let's just uh, keep that on track. 242. Gallo's weapon can crit, by the way. This is also always exactly 240 damage. And also inflicts HP slip status, so this is not much better than the Breath Wing. Unless you have a ring that denies ice damage, which there are. 198. Oh, Bonk is poisoned. Oh, that's less than idea. Nine hundred and ninety. This is too much. Galov, no! <laughs> this is less We're in phase three now. Uh, the less phase or the more phases you go through, the less physical defense this thing has. Oh, also it does have evasion, so that can happen too. Worth dying and retrying? Hey, I mean, this is just fine. This is 25% of my maximum HP and damage in flame. 286. I mean, we might be able to do this, although there are some mean attacks that can come in in the later <laughs> stages of the fight. 968. 1254 damage. Now the question is whether I should attack again or just wait until. Actually, I'm gonna wait. Hope that he hits Galaf until I need to heal. Come on, Galaf is the other guy. Flame. <laughs> he does not want to hit Galaf. He knows it's up. Alright, I have to hit. 264. Alrighty. He is one hit away. And all I can do is just wait at this point. Hit Gallop, please. 
Oh, or knock him out. That's fine too, I guess. Oh. Actually, don't hit Gallop with Tail. That would be bad for me. <laughs> because he would be blinded. Oh. Gallop, don't block this. I forgot about that part too. No, Gallop, stop blocking. I needed to take away his shield. Oh no, he's blinded now. Oh wait, no, he has a ribbon. He's fine. Stop blocking. <laughs> You're gonna knock yourself out. There we go. Counter? Come on, it's a 50% chance. No! 250-50 is missed. Okay. We're not gonna survive if he uses flame one more time. And there it is. <laughs> Alrighty, I think it's actually easier if we were to just do this fight the normal way, to be completely honest. Alrighty, either way, what would happen is if Galaf ever countered there, uh, is Arceo is just straight up dies. Because it can't trigger the phase transition, but it has no HP anymore. So, we're just gonna do this the normal way. I meant to give Galaf the Doom Sickle because it has much higher base damage and pierces defense, especially in the earliest fast phase. But I forgot about that part. He said cheese, so he must do the cheese. Why? Cheese failed, also stop the timer at some point. Why did you stop the timer? Stop stopping the timer. Please continue. Oh no. Actually, this is fine. If he gets confused, I don't have any spells anyways that he could use. And if he physically attacks one of my characters... It would heal them. Um, how far into the stream are we? 3.04, so it's about 6 hours and 25 minutes. 6 hours 25. Roughly. Also, what I need... Why is it red? Let me change the settings a little bit here. No global hotkeys, so I don't accidentally stop the timer anymore. And edit layout. Layout settings. Just all green, thank you very much. It's because you can't see the splits behind it. That's why it's red, by the way. <laughs> Could be your stream. You did this twice today. Oh, hi, welcome to the club. I'm also at two today. Lena is not a friend of frogs. Then again, these frogs are not friendly either. Still didn't get it. There's one encounter here that would be particularly bad to get. And that would be the Hydra, or Hyudora. I don't know which one it is in this translation. That one is basically an undead hyper enemy that has a ton of HP and has automatic reflect equipped. Which means, whenever Lena attacks, she would have a chance to activate Doom here as a spell, and that would bounce off of the reflect back to my own party. Which would be kinda bad. So that's the main reason why that thing would be dangerous. Well, that's not entirely true. That thing also hits like a truck. And hits everybody and can poison everybody. I have no way to heal poison. Alrighty. Um, I'm just gonna do it the normal way. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Frog looks friendly to you. Maybe you're fighting on the wrong side. Maybe. 306 plus... 50. Well, that's not much damage. 
slip status deals a bunch of damage. Oh, I probably should have had somebody with a ribbon thinking about it. That's really good damage. This thing has about 200-ish HP remaining, I think. Breathwing just hits everybody. That's an idea. Heal the healer first. We always wonder if he's building the dangerous temple temples. I agree. Alright, we are in phase two. This thing now has less physical defense, so we should heal more than 55 at a time. Yep, way more than 55 at a time. So this thing continuously throughout the battle, effectively just keeps losing more and more physical defense, but gains more and more magic defense. Plus, it is actually absorbing various elements while it is in various forms. In form 1, it's actually weak to wind damage instead of absorbing it for some reason. Oh. But this doesn't help either, I should be thinking. Don't heal the thing. Very unhelpful. Also, I think we're already in phase 3, aren't we? Oh, now we're definitely in phase 3. Or a phase 4. One or the other. But yeah, if you just keep dealing, dishing out enough damage, this thing can't do anything because its timer bar or action bar resets every time it has to transition into the next phase. Yes, claw. Alright, we're in phase 4. This is a paralysis, which is normally pretty bad. Alrighty. That was 4 times 1,600 damage. Now this last form here is actually immune to most elements. Except water. I think water still works. But it has really high magic defense, but zero physical defense. So this is kind of where... Two weapons shines quite bright for attacking. Then again, Ferris still deals more damage. It also has basically all sorts of attacks, most of them 25% of your maximum HP, but it can also do the Frost Breath attack, which is a flat 240 damage to your entire party plus HP leak status. It has so many attacks with random status effects added, and it has Maelstrom. Maelstrom has a chance to set your entire party's HP to less than 10. And if you're unlucky enough that it does that right after using Blaze, where it has HP leak status on you, so you continuously continuously lose HP reasonably quickly, then it can just straight up wipe your party real quick. Alrighty, um, do I want to grab Gallows equipment? Yeah, sure. Because he's gonna leave here. Do the monsters install the puzzles? Right. In Zelda, the temples are supposed to be a religious thing, but then monsters move in for some reason. Do monsters install the puzzles? I think the puzzles are there to begin with. And chances are decent, let's put it this way. All the temples in Zelda, they don't have a roof, you just can't see it. But that's how the monsters get in and out or around anyways, they just decide to crawl over the walls. That's my headcanon anyways. Do people worship in Zelda with puzzles? I would guess it's more to protect whatever they are using, but nobody ever looks up, so they don't realize there was no ceiling. Monsters are just puzzle enthusiasts. It's a vicious cycle of misunderstanding. Nice. Just walk through this waterfall. Most games that include a waterfall have something behind them, at some point. <laughs> the 3D Zeldas have roofs, that's why they are later in the Zelda timelines. Right. That makes sense. They invented roofs, finally. <laughs>
I wonder if I have enough money to actually buy one of the elemental rings. Those would be helpful, right? Just bring the fire crystal into low HP. Oh yeah, actually, hold up. That's something I didn't even consider. I can heal via the elemental absorption rings. I completely forgot about that part. I was just thinking, oh, I can use ice and fire shields, but also I can use a fire absorber ring. That thing would be incredibly handy to have, or at least one of them, maybe two. Attack, attack, attack! Hey, yes, Grunt, welcome. Thank you for a giant watermelon. Sound went weird. Should I reset, I suppose? Properties. Choose something else. Alright, should be back to normal. Sometimes the capture card just distorts the sound a bit. Maybe that's what you heard. So here's a question, would Samurai be useful in any capacity? Or Dragoon? I don't think Chemist would be there useful, neither would be Dancer. Um, haven't you already done this challenge by doing Quad Circle Run? Kind of. But this one does not allow healing or magic use outside of battle either. So it's a bit of a side strip. Samurai gets the chance to block attacks. True. That would be actually kind of a very handy passive. We definitely could consider Samurai with like full evasion equipment for the extended boss fight with a uh, reflex ring. That actually would make sense. Then again, it actually would make more sense to have a knight with the flame blade and the flame shield and the reflex ring so they could guaranteed survive phase 2. Do I need to be worried about any of the Meteor bosses? Ah, I guess Porobolos could be a little bit awkward. Just need to get a bit lucky though. I don't think they're gonna be that big of a trouble, but it might be a few resets. Chimera Brain we can just one-shot. And I think we have more than enough HP to survive Titan. Although if he uses Earthquake before, we reduce his HP to zero, we might just get wiped anyways. Maybe Pura Bros could be more of an issue now to think about it. Maybe. We'll see. It's 
not gonna be worse than solo freelancer, I don't think. Boom. That sounded more like a door opening in Corona Trigger. I really like that sound effect. Corona Trigger has some of my favorite sound effects overall. Like, for some reason, the little jingle that you get for interacting with a chest that opens once you have whatever the key of time is. I forget the thing. It has like a little fun jingle, and I really like that one. Do I need to set up anything here is the question. Honestly, this might just be fine for all the bosses. We do need to get a bit lucky to over the put over us. So let me just see. Actually, before I forget about it, how much money do we have? Enough to buy one ring. I don't think we need a second one. Well, actually, it's not technically enough to buy one ring, but... I can easily get a second one soon. Do the bosses drop any money? Let's actually knock out the two bosses that I know we can knock out. This one here, if we get unlucky, it might wipe us once, but I don't think it will. So this is going to be here is Titan. Titan is level 1, which is kind of the most funny fact about him. So if you have something that can inflict any status on him, if he is not immune to it, it will almost guaranteed hit, like silence or stop and stuff like that. He does have 2,500 HP, and the main gimmick of this fight is that whenever he dies, he is cast Earthshaker that hits like a truck your entire party. So you either need enough maximum HP to survive it, or you need to cast Float in order to avoid the Earthshaker entirely. You can also naturally just cast Curve Sticker if it feels like it. Getting lucky with the dodges, but I would have to heal anyways. There's the Earth Shaker, but we survive it without any trouble. Up to 5 on the damage on Lena that has, I think, basically no magic defense. So it is a pretty strong move. And casually... I don't think I had that much HP coming here, because I did not do much grinding. Actually, I think the first time I might have just had enough HP to survive it. Refill HP, you know what actually? I think it makes more sense to refill my HP in the library because that's quicker. Alright, the next boss here is Chimera Brain. Its main gimmick is that it just uses area of effect attack spells on your entire group most of the time. So it does a lot of damage to everybody very quickly. 
its main weakness is that it is susceptible to status effects that last for quite a long time. Like you could cast status effects on Titan, but they would only last like half a second. Enough for him to not be able to counterattack with Earthshaker if you paralyze him just before knocking him out. But this guy here, if you manage to cast stop on this thing or something like that, it will just stick for quite a long time. There's Aqua Rick. It is also uh, susceptible to getting doomed by Lena's attack, so that could help her. Perfect, thank you, Lena. This thing would have normally have 3,300 HP, but it doesn't have any more. Alrighty, and now the last one. Actually, I'm gonna buy the ring first. There's a city that is a bit out of the way that you don't have to visit. And its main attractions are two things. One, you can get the black magic spell for Toad to frog and unfrog party members or enemies. Which is mostly not that useful, but it's kind of a neat, neat little gimmick, I guess. And the other thing... It has is the rings that we can get here. So they sell three rings. What is the angel ring that gets you immunity to being zombified as well as the aging status, which are both amazing immunity immunities to have. The other rings are a coral ring that makes you more weak to lightning, take double damage, and it absorbs water-based damage. But this. Hardly any enemies that ever use water attacks, so it's not terribly useful. Except for one specific instance. Actually, two. Oh, that's the spell. Oh, yeah, I guess they also have good spells here. And the last but not least one is the Flame Ring, which is what I want. The Flame Ring absorbs fire damage as healing, nullifies ice damage entirely, and normally it's supposed to have a drawback where you take double the ice damage, but that one is bugged and doesn't work. So it's just that good. Also, the downside, I guess, is they cost a ton of money, so... If you're lucky, you might have enough money to buy one of them. Let's see. I probably can just buy one and that's it. Okay, I don't need these things anymore. You guys have the wrong armors equipped, don't you? Stealth. Stealth. No, we just don't have that many people to equip armor to begin with. Okay, we're keeping all the other items. So I have just about enough money to buy a flame ring. This thing also has some, like, physical defense on top of it, so it's actually quite nice. It's not gonna help me right here much, but it's actually strictly better than the Mithril Glove, because it is also much lighter. So might as well equip it. There's not really going to be any enemies that attack with fire. Explode looks like fire, but it's actually a neutral element, so it's not gonna work in the next encounter here. But it's amazing to have soon. I would buy more of these, especially Angel Rings, if I had the money. But I don't. always wonder why I can't land in front of this rock, because, well, there's this other flying friend that is right here, so that's why I can't land here. Alright, this is going to be a bit of an awkward fight. Actually, it's going to be a very awkward fight. Should I just have Lena be not a berserker? That probably would be sensible. In fact, Monk might be the way to go here for counterattacks. Yeah, let's turn her into a monk. This also has the most HP. I don't think Barrier does anything. Yeah, none of these things do anything, really. She's missing a tiny bit of max HP. That should be fine. Alrighty, so the reason why this is going to be... A bit of a tricky fight is, this is the encounter with six bomb-type enemies. 
Puroboros, they are called in this fan translation. And each one of these has 1500 HP. The catch about them is, if they use Explode, which they have a 1 in 3 chance to use whenever they do an attack maneuver, um, then they explode for however much HP they have remaining. I do not have 1500 HP, so any one of them that uses Explode while they are full HP is just gonna one-shot a character. Nothing you can do about that. Explode costs 1 MP. And then the second caveat is, they have a revival counterattack when they die, which revives all of their allies that have fallen to full HP. They have 100 MP total, a revival costs 50, so they can't cost it twice theoretically, but then they wouldn't be able to explode anymore. So my theory is, I just wanna put them onto low-ish HP, so if they explode, we will survive it. And SPQ92, thank you so much for 17 months. Welcome back. And I'm glad you enjoy your stay. I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much. Also, the first two turns, they actually don't do anything. The old status is going to slow it down actually quite a bit, so that's handy. Okay, we still didn't survive your attack. Can't do anything else with Monk for now. That is their second round. Now they're gonna be able to move next round. And the problem with the other ones on the left side is going to be... They are actually in the back row. Okay, nice. Slow them down a bit more. Nice crit. So they're in the back row, so we only deal half damage. So that's a bit of an issue. Now here I'm just gonna wait. Explode. It's only 150 damage. That's kind of ideal. We want them to explode when they have low HP. This one is gonna one-shot somebody. This is a big issue. But also, they cannot cast a revival counterattack when they get counterattack kill, which is why Lena might be. Well, would have been useful here. Alright, I hope the front two explode and the other one is gonna not do anything for now. Two attacks, 360, 720-ish. I didn't pay attention to the first damage roll. One more might kill it. Let's see... Okay, I have to... Oh. Yeah, that's it. Not terrible, actually only one bomb remains. So we need to get a little bit more lucky than this. But it can definitely work. And once again, if Lena counterattack kills them, if they attack her with a physical attack two out of three times, she has a chance to counterattack and they would not it would not trigger um, them reviving all of their allies. Alrighty. Eight to eight. Three hundred. This might be too much. But we can... Oh, it wasn't, actually. We can... kill one of them. If we want to. Like, if we get a crit on Lena, this is fine. 774... 300 plus 294, alright. This thing has 132 HP remaining. We will just hope that the uh, guys in the back don't explode. Oh, that's dead. That's really good. For me, anyways. One is fine. We can kill one. Alright, one attack. This is an explosion. Perfect, alright. That's exactly what we want. The low HP ones should explode. The other ones in the back, preferably not. This is good. That's very good. Counter. Okay. 153. And 306. And somebody is dead. Right there. Alright. 153. Uh, wait, Lena is the one that needs HP. It doesn't matter. I get two turns anyways. 
Oh, he also needed a bit of HP. This guy, one more. Don't crit. The six, this has 435 HP remaining. So both of my cactus would survive an exploder, so we wanna start working on the one at the bottom. Very nice. I do want crits right now. This thing has still too much HP remaining and it can move now. Good, that one is gone. That's not so good. Actually, no. We're fine. I just don't attack here. And I hope he doesn't use too many physical attacks. Right? He has 435 HP remaining. Explode, please. Counterattack, please. Oh my goodness. We still have enough HP to survive an exploder. Come on, Lena, counterattack. It's a 50 50. Okay, I think we win. Just barely. <laughs> nice. Second try. Okie dokie. 23 HP remaining. 21 more than we need, absolutely. All things considered. And I certainly take it. So is there anything else I need to prepare here? Normally you would want to stock up on supplies and stuff. Oh, by the way, I will have to use one tent coming up now that I think about it. Because otherwise the story literally doesn't progress. So I guess the no items challenge has failed, technically speaking. But not much I can do about that. Unless I knew how to do that crazy glitch they use in the tool assist speedrun to beat the game in like, what, eight minutes or so? Story required item use isn't a fail, in your opinion? Yeah, I think it's fair. Like, if there was some obscure and strange way to circumvent it, I would definitely go for it, even if it take, took a few hours, but I don't know of any. I'm just seeing that Bowie is kind of playing like a collectathon type ish game on the side. A spiritual successor to Goemon, apparently. That just kind of made me think. I feel like maybe playing a collectathon game again sometime. How good is a hat in time? Does anybody know? Also, this is the place where I have to use a tent. Do I have any? No, I don't have any, so we actually need to get into an encounter. There's only one type of enemy down here, and both their steel and their... Uh, I think they always drop is a tent. So, you can stock up on tents here if you want to. Your friend really enjoyed it. They aren't my thing, but he thought it was charming. Nice. You've never heard of anyone not liking it. Fair. Kind of hard to say you failed the challenge when the game will not move forward without the use. I mean, sometimes that's kind of the point, right? I mean, it depends on the type of challenge you're doing. But sometimes that's entirely the point, where... Can you beat Skyrim without ever using the left stick? Well, if you include just skipping the tutorial first and then coming back to do it later to skip it, skip it again. Yes. Also. I can't hurt this thing because I have a healing rod equipped. So I just hope this thing is gonna hit me someday. Thank you.
This is such a good music track. Alrighty, Gallop, welcome back. You get some equipment pieces to equip, and I'm gonna stick you in the back row with full moon so you can deal full damage from the back row. The downside is right now you do not have protection against back attacks. So as a precaution I'm just gonna save. Then again, you will deal full damage anyways. The biggest downside of back attacks normally is that my melee attackers, which, well, everybody's a melee attacker for the most part, deals only half damage if they are in the wrong row. But because Gallo has ranged weapons, it doesn't matter. High potions? I didn't even realize those could drop high potions. Hello, Gilgamesh. This guy here only ever attacks with physical attacks. So I think I need to deal 2000 damage. Ha. Huh. We should be fine. We're also faster than him by quite a bit. Thanks to Ninja having good agility. Oh. Apparently I need to don't deal quite that much damage. Works for me. Alrighty, welcome back to the entire party. Do I need a healer here? I don't feel like I do. Maybe I do, but... Actually, the further I get into the game, the more I feel like I will need a healer. And one with a shield just makes the most sense. Yeah, it just doesn't make the most sense, doesn't it? But then I also don't deal as much damage to the enemies. How am I ever going to get through? I'm probably going to alternate between using Butts as a healer and Ferris as a healer in that case. Just so they both get some Mystic Knight... ...experience in there. Oh yeah, also Lena, go back to being Berserker, please. Yeah. 
potion so we don't get back attacked. Who gets the elf shield? The elf cape. You get the elf cape. More speed. So this is a prime example of where I would prefer not having a healer and just more damage instead. Because these things don't have individually much HP at all. But I do need four attacks to knock them out. And Lena is too slow. Another reason why picking ninjas and mystic knights is great. They just have better agility so they usually get to attack before enemies. Kind of a big deal. Especially if you can't heal normally. That is entirely unnecessary. Aging status on top of knocking it unconscious. Why would you do that? Also, fun fact here the character is trying to sneak past, which works when its butt's in the front. But it's kind of weird looking when you have Lena in the front because he just does the Luigi impression with the left B from Smash Bros. Or if you have Gallop in the front, he's just doing a crab walk across. Seems kind of inefficient if you ask me. And Ferris. Ferris does her best Sonic impression with curling up into a ball. But the hot hair kind of might give her away because, you know. There's a lot of it, I guess. So back here, there's a full heal in this place. I don't know why, but it's very convenient. Kind of a COG kind of limbo. I think nothing except for your feet are supposed to touch the ground, though. So I'm not sure Galaf is following that rule. I guess this is where my two handed stops one shot again, I miss. Actually, that was already in the long variants earlier. The OG King of Limbo. Maybe. Oh, it does one shot with Ferris attack. So Galaf, if he hits twice, can also one shot. Oh, wait, these things are weak to lightning? I didn't even realize that. I probably want to heal for Gilgamesh. Speaking of weak to lightning, actually no, I'm not gonna switch, but they don't have enough HP. These things will always attack you, they are weak to lightning, so you can just area of effect lightning damage them. They only have about 500 HP, so even if we don't have a effective weapon against them, they're still a one-shot, they have no defenses. But they do have a chance to drop high potions. Which can be relevant, because you can just run away and come back to redo this encounter frequently. Just to get more high potions. Like that. Of course, I can't use high potions, so... There's that. Also, if you walk in this particular way, you actually don't get any more encounters on the bridge. Alright, Ferris, you're gonna be the right mage this time. Because I kind of really want to heal it. Welcome to Gilgamesh on the Bridge. One of the most iconic music themes in the game. He has 6500 HP. And once he drops below 2500 HP remaining, he initiates phase 2. Oh, I should have given you the Ancient Sword. Whoops. 702 damage.
Phase 2 basically means he gets haste and shell and armor, so he takes half damage and acts twice as quickly. Which is actually pretty extreme, because he then also gets jump, which deals full damage to characters in the back row. And he will always jump at the beginning of phase 2. Alright, who is he gonna jump on? I need to immediately heal. Three hundred forty-four damage. Okay, this is where physical defense actually comes in handy. Like higher physical defense is good. Electric shock for some reason does nothing. Like it just does a tiny bit of damage. I don't know what it is supposed to do, but it doesn't do that. As it looks, I would have probably been fine just attacking, but I like having the option to heal. I'm getting lucky that he just chooses to Electroshock instead. But as you can see, he moves two or three times for every one turn I get. Goomba stumping Lena. By the way, you can silence him in order to prevent him from casting all the buff spells in this version. It does not work in any other version, I don't think. Which is a big shame. Because one of the strangest spells from Time Age you can use, which is Void, at least that's the translation in this game, which effectively silences the battlefield so nobody can cast spells anymore at all, also does work in this. Normally, that spell does not work in boss fights, but for some reason it works here, and it's one of the most unique and interesting strategies to use, to just making unable to use those. Alright, good job everybody. Let's get back to... Bulking enemies with... Double grips. Alright, that's how you avoid the encounter. It's a bit of an awkward maneuver at the end there, but it works. You can sometimes get lucky and just cross like certain tiles that can trigger encounters because it's just a chance. But this path guarantees that you're not getting any encounters. Alright, welcome to World 2. We don't have free reign of where we go yet, but one thing is worth noting. This is where it's important for my characters to not get killed. Not just because, you know, they would just be laying around and doing nothing, but most importantly, the enemies here start being able to cut or well, zombify your characters. Specifically, there's a fairy orc type enemy in this area here that when your character is dead on the ground, it will revive that character. We have a 50% chance of it being just a regular revival, so thank you very much. Or, it can revive your character as a zombie. A zombie character basically has no HP remaining, zero. They cannot die through regular damage in any capacity. And they will always just do regular physical attacks against your own party. Which, well, considering they can't die, 
can technically be useful in some strange circumstances. And you can just give them a healing rod so they don't deal much damage, but most of the time zombie status is not that desirable. Also fusion, by the way, it kills your own character and heals an ally to full. But funnily enough, these guys here randomly target and who they cast fusion on. So sometimes they cast fusion on themselves, which means they just knock themselves out in order to heal themselves to full, but because they knocked themselves out before, they don't get the benefits of it. Either way, we really don't want to get zombie because unlike all other status effects, zombie does not go away when you go to an inn or use a tent or anything like that. So it is actually really bad if we get zombie. Because I literally cannot remove that status effect in any capacity. Maybe some cutscenes might remove it, but I'm actually not sure about that. But effectively, a zombie fight character is a reset. At least the fairy orcs only have a 50% chance to zombify a character. But later enemies actually just right after this area here, well, I guess slightly later, they guaranteed revive a character as a zombie if one is dead. So you don't want to encounter them with dead characters. Or you do if you want to actually get a zombie, I guess. Oh, fun fact about these Devourer enemies, they absorb lightning damage, so you don't want to hit them. Like, they look like the squids that are normally weak to lightning, these guys are absorbing it instead. Paris is really low HP now. Uh oh, Ferris is dead. At least these are not the enemies that can revive, so... We're good on this fight. But we need to be real careful. Or more specific, I should just save after this. Otherwise I might be in trouble. I didn't even know how much like physical damage these things dealt because I don't usually fight them. Oh wow. Two characters remain. This is less than ideal. By the way, fusion is blue magic, so you can learn it on your characters if you manage to have them target your blue mage that so you can learn it. Two people sun tanning on the beach. Yes. We can look at it that way. Good thing it's not too far away. So this is probably the reason why I need to soon start using mostly... Well, somebody with healing. Or at least occasionally switch to somebody with healing. By the way, this is a cutscene thing here. But I don't really have much of a choice aside from watching it because I really need to heal. This is my only way of healing characters that are fallen. So you don't usually get to see this cutscene when I play the game. Except for now. It just looks like he's hastily running around because the dash patch just makes it a bit weird.
Alrighty, let's see. Are there any new weapons I can get here? Because I don't remember. Another genie is here, which is a really good weapon, but I'm not planning on using a Beastmaster. A Dark Bow. This could neutralize some enemies. But I would need somebody who can actually equip bows, you know? I did say a Bowserker would be kinda neat. But I may be a bit late to that party. Slumber Sword is a strictly better weapon, I think. So I'm gonna get at least one. You can't two-hand katanas if I were to use a samurai. 98 attack, you have 86. That's not much better. Do I have enough money to buy more if I sell stuff? I'm not gonna use the katana. Let me see whether there's any armor I would want to have. Are we getting a chicken knife or a brave blade sword? The chicken knife would actually allow me to run away in combat, which would be an interesting benefit. But the brave blade just hits like a truck, so I might as well get that one. Let's see. There's no armor I want from here, so we're good. Might as well get two slumber blades. It's just a slightly better than the ancient sword. And I'm just gonna buy a Darkness Bow. Darkness Bow has a high chance of inflicting well, blind on enemies, which is amazing. Just purely because enemies that are blinded miss 75% of their attacks. Well, their physical attacks to be specific. Which is really, really nice for us. And unlike most other ways of inflicting blind on enemies... A dark bow actually is pretty much guaranteed to work if you hit the enemy. Well, almost guaranteed to work. Like, a very, very, very high chance. Ouch. You know, I do think... Oh, <laughs> apparently these mandrakes are undead. I didn't even know that. But anything that is undead gets automatically revived back to full health when they are getting doom casted on them. I had no idea. <laughs> That's great. Berserker needs 100 exp ability points to learn Berserk, and then another 400 afterwards to learn Equip Axis. So they are some of the fastest shops to completely master, but it's still far away. And I kind of would like to use a hunter for the later stages of the game. But equip bow is kind of far away, so it's not ideal. But equip bow would be also be great just to get agility and strength on other characters on top of it. So, yeah. Give her the bar Darkness Bow. Should be pretty good. Darkness Bow, I think, also has a chance to miss, because normally you need to use the aim command in combat as the hunter in order to guarantee a hit, which is kind of against most, most enemies. The aim command is not that great, because it just doesn't do anything. But with bow specifically, because they have naturally a uh, decent high chance to miss, kind of like maces or hammers or axes. Well, it would be nice to have that aim command.
was gonna say frequently at this point. What are the hit rates of the bows for Dark Bow? Let's see. Let's see. Dark Bow has a chance to hit for 70%. So 30% of the time I'm gonna miss. That is not accounting for on enemy evasion. Uh oh. I think if you cast spells on this thing, it's counterattacks as like Meteor or something, which will usually wipe your party, but I don't think it counterattacks melee attacks. Oh, wait, never mind. Uh oh! I don't have a way to heal. This is a revenge attack, it deals damage equivalent to its currently missing HP. Indeed, it has a lot of HP. Good thing I saved it. Because we might not make it through here. <laughs> Actually, that's gonna be a problem against the next boss too, coming up. I need my other characters. I'm just gonna walk back for now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Fairy Orc! Kill it, please. This is the thing that can revive my characters into zombies. Thankfully, it's only one in this encounter. <laughs> I don't know if there can be more. Oh, the Ferris is almost dead. This is a problem. Okay, that thing is asleep, which means Gallop is gonna guarantee hit with his weapons. Okay. Well, look at the bright side. These enemies at least are not going to zombify our fallen allies. Stomach acid. That is HP leak status, isn't it? So we are on a timer. Okay, both of the squids are asleep, so as long as I knock out the mandrake, we should win this encounter at least. With minimal HP. Sleep plates coming in handy in regular encounters. I think it's like a 50% chance to activate the sleep spell, but then it's still a chance to hit. But it's a pretty good chance to hit, I guess. Uh oh. I have to kill the fairy orc first. But the problem is now the others two can hit me. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, that's lucky. Okay, hit this guy. Hope that it uses fusion. Uh oh. Magic barrier. Fairy stops the critical HP. Nice, it used fusion. Now I hope it didn't use fusion. Actually, it doesn't matter. Okay. When fairy drops or Mystic Knights drops into critical HP, they activate Shell, which means they take half the magic damage, and they have half the chance of getting hit by spells that have, you know, a chance to hit. We managed to make it back to town. Arguably, it would have been more efficient for me to just reset after the Kuzar beast, but I kind of like keeping the experience and money along the way. We made back. Plus, this is more dramatic this way. <laughs> I kind of want to play a game that allows you to dual wield bows sometime. Like, not crossbows, just straight up bows. And how does your character attack the enemies then? Well, it just punches them, but did you expect? What else are you gonna do? Uh oh. Missed that guy. I think they only cast fusion when they are low on health. 
which is handy. We are so close to one-shotting them, because I'm pretty sure they have like a thousand HP, but we just need slightly more experience. Let's see if he fusioned himself. He did not fusion himself. But thanks to the sleep, we guaranteed hit this thing. Can you doom a Kuzar beast? Anybody know that? Sleep. No sleep. I guess the big downside of Lena not using a class that can hit harder is that she does well doesn't hit as hard. Duh. She's getting experience towards Hunter. Okay, that guy's asleep. Put that guy to sleep too. Forever. Hit, please. Thank you. I think Kuzar beats only start appearing once you are kind of like down here in this chunk of the map, that is. So let's just hope we don't run into any more of them. It is very unhealthy. Oh, I think we're good, because up here there are no encounters. Which, by the way, the Pixel Remaster just completely missed the point of there being no encounters anywhere in the grass or forest in this area, only in the desert on the right. So it just gives you goblins and stuff. Alrighty, and he has guaranteed encounters in the water. I should equip the lightning blades, because these things are weak to lightning. And have pretty good defenses, so... Alright. At least you're gonna guaranteed hit. This might knock it out. It did. Random attack. Don't hit the front guy. Thank you. That guy might be blinded. It's a pretty high chance. Oh, I did not mean to hit this one. That's fine, I guess. Sleep blades coming in handy. And you missed. That guy didn't miss. Despite probably being blinded. Okay, since most of the enemies here are weak to lightning, it just makes more sense to use the Coral Swords to deal lightning-based damage. Admittedly, this is also where I should have brought the lightning bow. I didn't... like, I always think of bosses. I didn't think of regular enemies that might be weak to certain elements for my weapon choice. So instead of putting them to sleep, we put them to sleep forever. Slightly different. Go. This should be fine. 
preemptive strike. Having an ninja in the party increases your chance for preemptive strikes and I'm definitely noticing it, it's very handy. I don't think I need the two to do any fancy targeting here. We should always move before they go twice, or well, we should always go twice before they go once. So that means four attacks from my guys that guarantee one shot. Monies. Okay, one shot this thing. And we have to kill the Moogle Eater. Oh right, I forgot this thing has a lot of defense. It also likes to cause a vampire, which deals damage equivalent to half its missing HP. Wait, can, do I even deal any damage to this thing? Uh oh. Eighteen. Forty. And there goes half its health respect. It is poisoned, so it will just continuously take poison damage. I forgot about these things. Galaf is not gonna do anything. The other characters do have a chance to deal damage. With a high enough roll on the roll table. And there's half its HP back. This... Can this thing wipe me? Vampire doesn't cost much MP at all. Hold up. We can't resist vampires, so it's not a guaranteed hit. Although this guy decides that it's not true. It has 600 HP total. And it has a chance to do nothing on its turn. But it is a 2 in 3 chance to do Mal Vampire. So it has 85 HP remaining right now. On the late game again. You can normally switch weapons in battle, yes, but this uh, challenge here prevents me from doing so. They're weak to fire, by the way. If only I had a fire based bow, that would be fantastic. I think I sold it. Let's see, it has 100 MP. Oh, we resisted vampire. How much does a vampire cost, even? Vampire costs 2 MP, so it can cost it 50 times. 5 zero. This might take a while. Unless we get lucky with a series of attacks and it missing. It was almost dead, but then it used Vampire again. It's kinda funny that Leno deals the most damage just because the bow has the highest base damage. And there it is. Also without Lena, we might as well just reset by the way. Just keeps targeting her. He knows who's the main danger. By the way, there's no such thing as a priority system in this game. It's just random. It just randomly decides to attack Lena. The thing is, even if we do survive this, we somehow need to still get healed up. Because th there's a boss fight after this. And it's Lena again! I'm gonna reset. 
Because we kind of need all characters alive coming up. Alright, for the regular encounters, the... Coral swords are fine. But I'm actually going to turn Lena into a berserker for now. Just so we have something that pierces the defense. Almost more worthwhile to wait out the MP before attacking so you take less damage from Vampire. The thing is, this thing is also automatically poisoned, so it will continuously take more poison damage. But yes, it would be less damage overall. I was just hoping to get lucky there. Poison deals 1 16th of your maximum health and damage each round. This is my favorite encounter. Two rounds and it's gone. Don't even need free empty. I should probably turn one of my characters into a white mage just to heal back up in the next encounter. Actually, maybe it's not all that necessary. We'll be fine. Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll be fine, huh? So this is where Lena comes into play. Yeah, weak to fire. Nice. Lena can one-shot them in multiple ways, so we just wait until she gets that stuff done. Nice. Good job, Lena. Maybe I should have turned one of the characters into a white mage. Uh-oh. The funny thing is, if you have an item equipped called the Bone Mill that we will pick up later, they actually would damage themselves because a drain effect gets removed when you target undead enemies. Um, ah, shit. I needed to attack this guy. Quicker that is. Actually, I'm just gonna let Gallop's turn go away. Because the other two can theoretically add a little bit of damage if Lena does manage to deal damage, but not quite finish them off. Ouch. We can't resist the vampire, it's not a particularly ac accurate attack. Now, Magic Barrier will half the chance of Vampire hitting. Okay, that guy's done. Very nice. They only have 600 HP, Lena. Don't need to do both more than 600 damage and the other thing. Cast Doom on them. Nice. Good 
we're just using magic barrier again. Why? I don't know why Mystic Knights do that sometimes. Nice. Very good, Lena. I believe in you. 92. Okay, that thing is dead. Nice. Good job, Lena. Alrighty, so we're gonna turn you into a white mage and hope you survive to actually heal yourself. That would be lovely. Health cape for evasion, put you in the back row for taking less damage. Preemptive attack, very handy. Which means I guaranteed get my heal in right here. Then I can start healing the others too. I'm intentionally going to attack the same guy so I get more turns. At the same attack inefficiently. Ouch. I think this is gonna knock it out, unless Galath misses. Did not miss on this day. Oof. Okay, this could be sketchy. I have to attack. I could attack my own dudes. This is, might be where actually a zombie in the party could theoretically be useful. Because then I could just attack the zombie. And delay my turn without having to, you know, attack anything else. I want to delay the combat so I can heal more. So maybe a zombie wave healing staves is going to be part of the strategy in the late game. Like, it's a very real possibility. I'm gonna do that. Back to decent HP levels. Ouch. And back down. Right, but Magic Barrier just activated again, Dryzalizer. Like, after no enemy did anything. Which is why I was confused as to why it reactivated right there. Okay. It's not bad. This chest on the left contains a phoenix stone. I can't use them anyway, so there's not much of a reason. Preemptive attack. Okay, this is an excellent time to heal up. Uh, buffs do not expire in Final Fantasy V. They last forever. So it doesn't expire. Nice. Good hit, Lena. What is technically possible is that one of the nothing turns of the enemies just targeted the character because maybe they need to target still even if they do nothing and that could reactivate the magic barrier. Like that's my theory anyways but I've also seen the magic barrier activate at the very beginning of the battle and I have no idea why. Macron weirdness? Yeah. Okay we're at decent health right here so that's very good. Kept my turn. Anything 
finish it off, please, Lena. Thank you. Hello. Malkin. I hope you're doing well. Muggle. Alrighty, so now... We hope to not run into an encounter while walking up there. Because I actually don't know where the combat trigger is. But this thing is gonna be a bit of a... An awkward fight, to say the least. Um, it is not immune to blind, so I actually do want to have Lena as a hunter here with the darkness spell. Yeah. Put her into the back row. Then, what else? It is weak to fire, but I don't have a way to deal fire damage, so I'm gonna use the... Ancient Blade. I think we can hold it, so Ancient Blade makes more sense. It is immune to sleep. Um, do I want anything else on Galaf here instead? Not necessarily. I don't really have a good way to make Galaf as a ninja useful in particular. It'll be f well, actually, no. I specifically don't want the ninja because ninjas attack twice and this thing counterattacks. I don't know when it counterattacks, but it does. So, giving him something that only attacks once probably makes a whole lot more sense. What could I give you, sir? I could turn you into Samurai, actually. Samurai has a good chance to just dodge stuff. If you counter, so you can do that too. And I saw, saw my katana, of course. It'll be fine. Either way, Samurai has a passive ability to dodge incoming attacks, so he actually is invulnerable to most physical attacks. And thank you. Appreciate it. So critical, by the way, by this guy, literally doesn't do anything different aside from, you know, just attacking. So it's the same thing as if it were to just attack. Okay, now here we hope that it blinds. I don't think it blinded, or it could have just hit anyways. Just gonna wait. You really don't like Lena, wow. This thing has 5000 HP. I'd love to counterattack. If he casts much, uh oh. I didn't realize he counterattacked with. Wait, that's not a counterattack, is it? He's also undead, so healing him will damage him. Oh no, that is what he counterattacks with. That's not good. Let me think about this. I have to attack with Ferris. But I don't have to attack him. Don't deal too much damage. Don't age yourself. No! Ah, Ferris, why? I wanted to give her barrier, so she has an increased chance of resisting. Ah, how am I gonna do this? Oh, right, the question mark. The revenge attack is in the counter too. This deals damage based on its missing HP, which is kind of a big problem. Um, Ferris has no more stats at this point. So theoretically she deals no more damage to it. Let's see. Basically I want to get Ferris into low HP. So she activates the barrier. Come on, Ferris, activate the barrier, please. It doesn't activate when she, you know, does it herself, but sometimes it appears to activate anyways, but I'm not sure when. Come on. Yeah, I was just hoping that it would activate anyways. 
so you can see how crazy powerful the blind status is on enemies. He just doesn't hit. That's exactly what I'm thinking, Smoothie. It's just counter with monks. Or oh, actually, white mage. But in order to get countering, you actually need to get hit. Hmm. Yeah, I think countering this thing to death might be the way to go. Alright, I need to heal Ferris at least a little. Basically, I want him to put Ferris into critical HP. Man, you love actually using the aging status on yourself. But for that, he actually needs to hit her. Don't counter me. Okay, that's fine. So the reason I want to do this is because my current plan is to have Shell on Ferris, which would allow me to resist most of his revenge attack spells. He's level 29, so he does get an improved chance to hit with the revenge attack, but Shell would just cut that in half and give me much better odds of not getting hit by it. How much of the game could you do, theoretically, by only countering? There's a lot of bosses that don't attack normally, they just do spells. Or even regular enemies. So there's a lot of things, actually, that would immediately stop you. I don't think Berserkers would help here, actually. Alright, I'm just gonna... ...do this. Did you just double counter? Or was one of them attack? Oh well. Let's just hope. We can theoretically win still, but the chances are pretty dang low. There it is. Yeah, we need to do still deal about 2,000 damage there. Alrighty. Wipe number next. But I think monk countering is going to be the name of the game here. So we're gonna use... Berserker on you. For now, it's getting through the regular area. You guys are gonna equip the Coral Sword. One shot enemies, and... I'm just gonna turn Galaf into the White Mage for now. He looks the best as a White Mage anyways. Guys can't, I think counter or the power ring can only equip, be equipped by like medium armor classes, and light armor classes. No buttons allowed at all. Have to rely on cosmic radiation to trigger a victory condition. That would be kind of rare. Does the pulse still count your heal stuff hits? Yes. In Final Fantasy V, enemies don't look at the attack type or the damage type they receive. They look as in what type of input as a command you use in order to attack them. So if I use the attack command, even if it results in a healing spell or like a fire 3 spell, 
they are, they are going to react as if it was a regular physical attack. With some exceptions. Alright, the big question is, do I want to blind the Tyrosaurus anyways? Oh. Alright, the classic. Because the blind would give me more time, but it would also drag out the fight by quite a bit. Are, are wall rings purchasable in World 1? No, you can buy a flame ring, an angel ring, and a coral ring. Those are the only ones you can get. I bought a flame ring, because I did not need the money for anything else. Normally the money goes into supplies, but I can't use supplies in this challenge. I guess we're just gonna wait. My instinct was to just defend here, but I'm not allowed to defend. So I would get Gallows turns, so I can heal potentially. Alright. Stretch time, everybody. Get up and stretch. Wave, hello. Also, I probably should be healing here at least a little. But I'm still stretching mostly.
Alright, yeah, stretching complete. What now? This guy is going to hit somebody pretty hard, but I can heal it up immediately. There we go, good job everybody. Not the, not the most exhilarating battle, but oh well. And walk at least three steps. So, now we're going to counter this thing. Because the only way I know how to defeat this thing is counter. So Galaf can stay up as a white mage with the healing stuff to counter. Equip the power ring to take less damage. Then I need to turn you into a monk, because otherwise I can't get counter. Um, might as well use barrier, I guess. Just in case that comes up. You could turn into a monk as well. Might as well barrier. And you turn into a monk. Aside from Gallus, I'm pretty sure nobody has... Uh, counter just unlocked. Is the timer stopped for a particular reason? No. How did that happen again? Oh, my life split crashed. Thank you for letting me know. I don't know why life split decides to crash recently. I wish I knew. Couldn't tell you. Like, it didn't properly clash. It also tries to update, but the update doesn't work. Something is weird with my life split. Oh well. What were we at? Like, 8 hours? Alrighty, so... This guy has 5000 HP. So we can walk here. Okay, this is very tricky. This guy has 5,000 HP, and my best way of dealing with him is using counter-attacks. Nice. Because whenever I attack him... Oh shoot, I just realized. I can't heal, because I need to attack. Ah. Uh... Wait, this is a problem. I can't select Galaf to heal. Wait, I think I have the solution. I need to have everybody knock themselves out. Except Gallo. Because this way I will be able to sell a Gallo and have him heal himself. And he's just gonna carry the party on his back all the way to town afterwards. It'll be fine. Because if I attack this guy directly, he can use a revenge attack, as we've learned, which deals damage equivalent to his missing HP. And that, uh, considering that we really don't have that much HP left over... Uh, well, we don't have nearly 5000 HP, so he was just going to counterattack us to death very quickly. Thankfully, he's undead. So we can just use the healing stuff to both damage and heal ourselves while counter. I did not need to turn the others into monks. But I kind of forgot about the part where, you know... I can't do anything but attack, so I don't want to attack him. So the only other option is to attack myself. But hey, this works. This is guaranteed to work, in effect. 50% of the time, Galaf is going to counter-attack. What did you have in mind, Smoothie? Uh, 
Like, I did not consider the part where I couldn't just select Galuf and have him heal. In this game, you cannot switch your character that are currently, like, ready to act. That is a thing they implemented in Final Fantasy VI for the first time. Countering with monks. Right. But I kind of need to keep my dudes alive, I guess. The only way I could reliably keep Galuf alive was by him actually getting turns. So that meant the others had to get their turns first. Somehow. Very convenient that we have one guy that actually got so far in Monk that... ...they learned counter. <laughs> the alternative would be to just burst this thing down before it can do that with high enough damage output, but I... I don't think I can currently put that on the table. Do characters counter if attacked by an ally? Not in this game, no. That would be kind of funny. You attack yourself and then you counter-attack yourself. Or you punch an ally that is confused, and they just punch you back and proc a doom on you with the death sickle or something like that. Hey God's Black Arm, welcome! How are you doing today? Come on Galaf, you need to counter a few more times here. It's gonna take forever if you don't counter. Thank you. This is not a boss I had in my radar for it being particular, well, potentially problematic. Because usually what you do, you can't throw a phoenix down at this guy and you just win. Well, most of the time. Sometimes he's resistant. Now, we also hope that we don't get into an encounter walking out of the cave, because there's still a few steps left. Have you ever done a Final Fantasy VI 4 character in a magic run? No. I have not done particularly many Final Fantasy VI playthroughs. I think I've only done ever, like, casual playthroughs so far. Are you allowed to use espers for stat gains, though? Because that's one of the most interesting things to me in Final Fantasy VI, to be able to customize and your characters via espers. So no magic actually kind of sounds less interesting in a weird kind of way. It would be a challenge for sure. But it would feel like a little bit as if you were to take away the option to equip subclasses in Final Fantasy V to an extent. Yeah, this thing is dangerous, or can be anyways. Welcome to you, Falfon. I hope things are going well for you as well. As you might be able to tell, things are going fantastic right here. Because we're going to guaranteed win, eventually. When Galuf decides to counterattack more frequently, I guess. But eventually we're gonna win.
According to the rules by Gilgabot, no espers. You can use magic learned by Terra or Celos naturally if you really need to need it. I see. Yeah, I think I've seen that uh, challenge thing before. And as I said, to me, the customization is the most interesting aspect of these games. So it's just kind of being taken away, it just makes the game less interesting. It's why I like Crystal Project so much. There's so many potential combinations with the added ability to not just add subclasses, but the entire like passives on top of it. There we go. Good job, Gallif. Now it's just hope that we don't run into an encounter walking out of here. Because that would be awkward. GG. For now, don't celebrate too early. Did not celebrate too early. So what's the best class I can put on Galaf to get out of here? The Moogle also tells you to not walk in the desert, so you just walk on the not desert. You can go through the desert, but there's enemies in there that you literally cannot run away from. They are reasonably dangerous, although you can beat them, but definitely not for the light of heart. Is there a class that can avoid all encounters? Not really. No. Um, hmm. All right, I'm gonna go freelancer. Wait, I would like to go Freelancer, but I see a bit of a problem with this. Like, my idea was to go Freelancer. Oh, no, we have to do Max. There we go. This, I think, gives me the best chance to survive here. If we get into an encounter. Alright, we're good. The entire drama was for nothing. But I did not know how many steps I had until the encounter, so it could have been just one. It was more than one, thankfully. Wait, Oracle can avoid all encounters? Really? I had no idea. I could reduce them, okay. Nothing removes them fully. Well, I sure wish I could cast nothing. To remove them fully. Alright, you need to talk to this guy in order to advance the cutscenes for later. He also has an ether for us, a phoenix down, 10,000 10, gil, 1 gil, a dancing dagger which is amazing, and a cabin which we don't need. I would like to use it, but I... well, it's against the rules. But also, very importantly, we actually get our third... Elf cape right here. So, Yaga became a Void Mage. I like crowd controlling. Debuffing enemies, buffing allies. Crowd control, those are my spells of choice. Hello.
I like this music. One of my favorite things to do when, you know, I'm just listening to the music is sometimes I just listen to the instruments that are less dominant and kind of try to focus on them just for fun. And some of them have just really nice, like, I don't know, rhythms, melodies to them. It's quite nice. Timber? Oh. I would need to look up that word. Timber in the modern English general refers to the quality of sound made by a particular voice or in musical instrument. Timber is usually being distinct from pitch, intensity, and loudness as a descriptor of sound. Car are going to park the hero here. Yep. Yeah, I think. How do you pronounce timber? Like it looks French to me. Then again, it is supposed to be English too. Alright, as is tradition, I pick up the exit spell just in case I do some rot weird shenanigans later where I need to use the same party to get out of here. You've always heard it as timber. Okay. That works for me. Yeah, I guess there's a lot of like these nice... Nicely... Tim... Timbers? So would you say there's like these nice little timbers in the background? Is that how you use that word? Or... How would you do that? So this is save point down here, but we are still mostly, you know, knocked out. But thankfully, um, you know, Galaf, this is his own castle, this is his kingdom, but he is not too shy to go ahead and just, you know, sleep in the inn in his own castle and also pay for it. <laughs> Character of the instrument sound would be that. Okay. Alrighty, back to our previous job stuff. So you're gonna try and master Hunter, although again I'm a bit late on that, but it's considering that we fight basically everything along the way, and we may have to grind anyway, so might get a good chunk of ability points in there. Caution for you. Darkness spell, put you in the back row. You're going to get back to mastering Mystic Knight. Double grip for the slumber blade to deal extra damage. And you use a plane tap. Because the defense difference at this point between plant plumed and mystic hat doesn't make that big of a difference anymore with the damage numbers we are dealing with. So I feel like it made sense to just go with the magic defense instead. And Galaf, my friend. Go back to Ninja because you need to master Ninja. And you might as well use counter just in case you get it. Oh right, you can actually go in the front row now with dancing daggers. 
because these are actually pretty... S the dancing dagger is really strong. If it does what you want it to do. <laughs> Gotta keep the lights on somehow, true. Let's see. No new weapons here. I think the weapon and armor that we can buy is in the next city. Yeah. There's a white robe up there that makes you immune to poison status. We can also go over here to actually pick up a really good sword. It doesn't have any special effects to it, but it hits like a truck. Einderspell, thank you so much for the raid. And welcome, I hope you're doing well today. How's it going? And if I may ask, what were you doing? What can people expect if they join your stream? The dancer clothes don't affect the dancing dagger, do they? I don't see why not. I have to admit, now that he asked the question, I'm not sure, but I just always assumed it would. Like, if you get a red mage plus a thief to steal a tiara for, from the Lamia in the Lonka Ruins, and use the dancing dagger of the red mage, it should give you mostly sword dances at that point. Well, whenever it triggers. Alrighty, Ferris, you get a new sword. This thing has 114 base attack power, so it's just it's gonna hit even harder than anything before. And I'm going to go back to save real quick. I don't expect to die against this thing. Maybe I should just go for it. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's not gonna change the frequency at which uh, dances appear, but... It's gonna give us more sword dances if they do appear. Should be the same thing. Also, there's three enemies attacking us, but there's only one abductor right here. He does have, I think, Vampire as well, so... It would be dangerous, but we also just confuse him. And he tried to Hurricane either himself or us. Hurricane also puts a cact into critical HP, but he doesn't have that much HP, so... We just destroy him. So here it is especially important that none of my characters are dead while traversing these fields because there are these ridicule enemies that guarantee to revive a character as a zombie if you have something dead. Plus, they are really fast. They are really, really fast. So most characters are not gonna get a turn in, although I think Mystic Knights and Ninjas might. Oh, sword dance. Oh. Casual three and a half thousand damage from Gallop right there. My gosh, they even sword and the legendary ninja sword all have increased parry chance. Yes. I love those weapons, right? Yes, so good. All right, we need to do the cutscene thing first. That 900 plus sleep proc in any normal run, that's such an easy frog to catch. True. Mm
I'd like to say this is a really pleasant sound effect. I meant the swishing and swooshing before that. Alrighty, welcome to Help Village. There's some really good equipment here, but I'm not sure I have enough money for it. This is not it, and this is it. So the strength armor gives plus three strength. So does the bandana, by the way. Both of these equipment pieces are amazing for just like raw power. And I can buy it. Four of them for everybody one. Excellent. You get a bandana and a strength armor. You get a strength armor and no metal helmet for you. Bandana and strength armor. So basically, right now Galaf has plus nine strength on his equipment pieces, so he be is going to hit a lot harder than before. And also, these armor pieces do have a good chunk of defense on top of it. I'm gonna sell the Metro Helmet, I'm not gonna use it anymore. I'm gonna not use the Full Moons anymore, they are too weak at this point. Um, stealth Armors don't have that much value either. Let's see. Killer Bow. Uh, has a chance to instantly kill enemies. I think... I think this is distinct from the instant death, but I'm not. I don't think it works on undead. Is there anything I want to instantly kill that isn't undead on the mountain? Can't really think of anything. Kodachi is a ninja dagger. Actually, might be better than the guardian dagger for raw damage, but. Guardian Dagger has a chance to block attacks, which is nice. It's probably worth having, just in case. Yeah, I think that's fair. Actually, I will be able to use the Killer Bow against uh, Crystals too, if push comes to shove. But I have the Flame Ring, so we're basically good against this single anyways, as long as I get at least one Reflect Ring. Wait. I don't need a Reflect Ring. Yeah, we're good.
Welcome to Tyrell. Have I played World of Warcraft on NA servers? Uh, not really. But there is one other guy that has basically played as Jagamoth in World of Warcraft. That was like one or two years after I started using the name. Actually, no, it was in the next expansion even. But he played a Death Knight and I think he's also streaming on Twitch theoretically. But I've not played on NA. Well, I have played very briefly. During... Like the beginning of Battle for Azeroth. Samurai Yagamath, yeah, th that one is not me. Apologize. But I do believe there's another Yagamas streaming on Twitch somewhere. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah. What do I do against poison? I have nothing to do against poison. Wait, this is gonna be a problem, isn't it? I can easily get poisoned in the upcoming sections. Wait, 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 I need to backtrack. Hold up. This is an unusual case of a very obscure armor piece actually being useful for something that I don't normally care for. I need to go back real quick. Weird coincidence, I see. Yeah, I do believe he, at least the guy I know of, was really heavily into PvP. I played mostly support and... Through it though. Alrighty, so the weird piece of equipment that is actually going to come in handy here, or potentially handy, is the Angel Armor. So the Angel Armor actually has the highest amount of magic evasion you can get in the game. The game doesn't tell you about that because magic evasion is not a stat you can see in the equipment screen, but basically it, I think it's like 25% magic evasion, which means if an enemy uses an attack that has a chance to hit, or a spell that has a chance to hit, 25% of the time it's just gonna flat out fail, regardless of any other factors. Which is really nice. But it's also light armor, and can only specifically be equipped by chemists, as well as oracles, I think. Actually, can something else equip that thing? Let's see, Angel Rope? Angel Suit, it's called. He doesn't have that much physical defense. Oh, I can't go back! I didn't know that you couldn't go back! Oh no! <laughs> oh no, I can't get the Angel Suit. Basically, it makes you immune to getting poisoned. Which normally is completely inconsequential to get poisoned. You just use an antidote and you go on your way, but because I can't use antidotes in this challenge run, because I'm not allowed to use any items. Or spells. Getting poisoned means that the character is basically at low HP at all times. And there is a our enemies in here that like to cast poison breath. There's one other way for me to get immune to it. But that's not until a little bit later. You're going to say you pretty sure you can't go back. Yeah, I mean, they even say that in the story. I just never thought about it. I never tried to go back until now. <laughs> so this is the ridicule enemy, by the way. They also hit pretty hard. But more importantly... Okay. Okay, they didn't hit. Uh, if one of my characters is dead... He will revive them as a zombie, which is not good. Because I can't cure the zombie status at all, like literally at all. I have to save and reset. Yeah, the bone mail will get poison immunity. I'm gonna actually just go straight for the bone mail instead of going into the side rooms for picking up stuff. That's so rude. <laughs> I got a counter attack. <laughs> I didn't even know that could happen. Oh boy. Well, that's a good counter-attack right there. 
Ferris is going to knock this thing out. So here we hope that Galaf is not going to do Chitterbug Duet. Because otherwise he will heal the dragon and damage himself pretty heavily. This thing has a lot of HP. And does hit pretty hard. And it can use Poison Breath. If I get Poison Breath, I basically have to backtrack in order to heal. Okay, just gave, it, gave him MP. That's fine. Don't worry about that part. But I would like to do the damage. Okay, we're good. Probably should turn Gallop into a healer here. He also guaranteed drop Dragon Fangs, which are each worth 2,500 monies. It just makes more sense to turn the other guys into healers because they have equipped shield. Oh, who is not using an elf cape? I think you need to use an elf cape, Gallop. You need the evasion. Put you in the back row, you have the healing rod equipped. a high potion or a cabin. Either way, I don't need it right now, right now. That's the wrong thing to do, Gala. Oh, by the way, those sting eagles can also poison. Like that! This is not good. Again, I have no way of countering poison and it will keep ticking in the overworld. Oh, well that could be good. Could you please hit the dragon with... Ouch. <laughs> Jeez, I think it's like a truck. Please hit the dragon with the beak attack that petrifies enemies. That would be lovely of you. Ferris first. Okay, I think this thing should be done. Oh, it's not. Maybe now. They tried to beak, which is a petrification attack. If an enemy gets petrified, they're straight up dead. Which is kind of what I would like to see right now. I guess you could say at least Lena is in her natural state, because she likes getting poisoned or something like that. Also, Sting Eagles normally have a lot of evasion, but enemies that are confused cannot dodge attacks. Unfortunately, Lena now makes the screen go blurry the entire time whenever we take a step, and she also takes damage. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, one down. Please hit Lena. If anybody. Okay, nice, we hit. That's lucky. Oh no. <laughs> Mystery Waltz, as long as you don't do the other one, we're good, I guess. Maybe the Darkness Bow would make more sense here. Oh, rip Lena. Look at the bright side. At least we're not gonna get the blurry screen effect anymore. These Bone Dragons can put a character into critical HP with their attacks. I would prefer if you didn't do this. But... well... You can not just do it anyways. <laughs> Alright. Reason of extra removed. True. I just have no way of reviving with this challenge set. Ah, there it is. Galof healed the thing and damaged himself. Ouch, that's a paralyzation. So as long as that doesn't go on to bonk, we're good. Because I can actually heal. Alright, that went not too terrible. 
losing one character at this point is okay. We're almost there. There we go. Bone mail acquired. Now I can't heal Ferris anymore if I equip the bone mail, but she can now no longer be poisoned, which is kind of a big deal. Yep. I don't have a way to heal you, do I? Not really. The bone mail also has a variety of other extremely useful side effects. Nice sword dance. That is hitting like a truck. That thing is dead. So this is kind of a special encounter that only happens once. If you manage to help the golem not get killed by these weird dragons here. Which have a lot of defense apparently. He's gonna be quite grateful and actually join you. And instead of smacking you and running away, which is a lot of damage that I would like to not take. He is going to instead... Well, be replaced with a different encounter. He has like 2000 HP or something like that. So we can reasonably easily still do this. Sword Dance would be great here. I didn't realize this version of this enemy had so much defense though. I think barely takes any damage compared to the regular version. There we go. Now it's just wait. Does the bone milk cure poison when equipped? No, it does not. Immunity to status does not remove the status, unfortunately, in this game. But here's a fun thing I can do. I can now equip the bone mail onto fairies and uh, equip the bone mail onto Gala. And for the next one encounter, Ferris is still going to be immune to all the status effects the bone mail provides immunity to. So she will not get hit by these. And Galuf is also getting the bone mail immunities because he has it equipped right now. Because there's a minor bug in this game where... Basically, the immunities from the previous encounter you had through your equipment carry over to the next one encounter for some reason. Don't know why that happens, but it's very handy right now. Ouch. I can heal Ferris, I cannot heal Galuf. Tempting Tango is still better than the one that can heal the opponent. I think that zombie dragons just skip the turn. Also, I've gotten lucky that they don't use their poison breath. Because otherwise, that's a guaranteed poison. Alright, I'm just gonna switch the bone mail around. Back to Ferris. Bone mail basically is one of these armors that has incredible upsides. But huge downside as well, because you characters on that, you cannot heal them through traditional means anymore, it would deal damage to them. But they also gain the benefits of being undead, where if an enemy tries to absorb your HP or MP, the effect gets reversed, which is very handy. Especially if the enemy loves using absorb effects, like the little jelly things earlier in the other queue. Oh, that's not good. I can heal Galaf here, though. As long as it doesn't die. Wait, why do you take so less, much less damage than Ferris? But the bone mail also provides you a lot of immunities to a lot of status effects. Among other things, you're immune to blind, poison, aging status, confusion. Uh, those are some of the most important ones. You can still get paralyzed, and you can... Actually, paralysis is kind of the main thing. You can also get stopped still. 
But you're basically immune against most other things. There is... Did I switch over again? I did not. Oh now back over to Gala. Alright, you can absorb HP from this thing. That's actually really good. Pretty sure poison breath happens late in the uh, script. Okay. Nice. Gala of Sword Dancing. It's basically a 50% chance to activate a dance, then a 1 in 4 chance to get a sword dance, which effectively deals 4 times damage. You also get a coronet for money and an air blade. Do I have use for an air blade? It's an area of effect attack. I think might have some use. It's also a wind based weapon, I think. Oh. I didn't switch the thing around, but they don't poison me. Boom! Puts Gallop into critical HP. And Bonk. And Bonk is too slow to be. Oh, shoot. <laughs> no, I forgot about the bone mail. No! No, I can't equip the bone mill anymore. Good dodge. Thanks, Bonk. Uh-oh. Yeah, I've done this plenty of times in the past as well. Not gonna lie. Good thing you have a shield, too. So there's a save point just south of here. But without the bone mill, I'm really not sure I can win the upcoming boss battle. <laughs> with the bone mail, it was reasonably doable with just one character, to an extent. Actually, no, I can still do this. We have the... Death Scythe. I don't know. Bonk bonk the wrong person by accident. Indeed. Well, at least Ferris doesn't have the bone mail equipped right now, so I don't need to worry about that, but... Scythe and Killabo get lucky. Yep, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Nice dodge from the claw, didn't get poisoned. Good dodges, really. And didn't miss the bird either. Good job, guys. We're also getting a good chunk of experience. These things are worth quite a bit. I'm not picking up the chest, it's like a cabin or something like that. Hey. More of these. I'm gonna hit the bird first to try to, anyways. It's kind of why I attacked the dragon earlier. I figured it might not hit. And the dragon is guaranteed to be hit by the attack. So it does take a few swipes. That bird hit a lot harder than I anticipated it would, completely honest. Dodge on the claw, didn't get poisoned. Also, I'm pretty sure the dragon only uses poison breath when it's the only character left, so theoretically leaving that eagle thingy alive is actually kind of beneficial on that end. Nice. 
nice. Alright. Oh no. There's the poison. Our days are numbered. And we have to walk out of here as well. Did I get the Doomsickle during World 1? I did. Alright, we are at the save point. This could be very, very sketchy. There's usually at least one encounter on the way there anyways. Okay, we are actually here. Ferris has one HP remaining. Um... I need to heal her, otherwise she will die. <laughs> That's kind of the issue here. So the only way to heal her is either using a dancing dagger or the healing rod. Well, oh wait, I could have gone for a freelancer as well. Wait, hold up. I'm gonna turn you into a freelancer too. With... Power doesn't do anything. Double grip. Doesn't do anything. Magic power with white spells. You get the healing rod. Shields don't do anything in this encounter either. You get a green beret for speed. Health cape for speed. Because these enemies always hit guaranteed. So the only thing that matters is speed, effectively. So do you get the Doom Sickle? Shield doesn't do anything. In fact, shield actually just slows me down, so I'm gonna unequip it. You're going to get a green beret, and I'm actually gonna give you the ribbon, which will give you immunities to a lot of status effects. However, paralysis and confusion still work on you, which is a bit of an issue. Thief Club actually gives you more speed, that's good. This is where I wish I kept my ninja ropes. Oh well. Alrighty, so the plan here is to have Ferris... ...hit the central plant thingy, and one-shot it. Turn one. Because it is not immune to instant death. So the most important little plants, so... Aw, oh, you tried. There was a proc, but it resisted. So this plant that just died, I think inflicts confusion or paralysis, which we are both susceptible to. And the plant in the bottom left is the one that is the other one, confusion or paralysis. These are the most important plants. Graying pollen... Also, I should be in the back row. There's no reason to be in the front row. Graying pollen inflicts the aging status. Which... Fairy should not be immune to. Uh-oh. Please use the healing rod on yourself. Nice, that thing is dead. Use the healing rod on yourself, please. Darkness is blind, so that's really bad, because now Fairy has a... small chance to hit. Thanks for the heal, I guess. Charm is confusion, and Fairy getting confused is really, really bad. Thankfully, getting hit undoes the confusion. She should still be blinded, yeah. So 75% chance to miss baseline. Alright, you're no longer confused, that's good. You're blinded, which doesn't matter for the actual immune to us. So now we just need to hit this thing. All these little plants do is inflict status effects. Guaranteed, because they never miss.
I should have given the ribbon to Felius, huh? Oh. I was unfortunately getting confused. And unconfused resets your bar. Also, Ferris is now entirely blinded, so I will have to turn her into the healer later, because you don't rely on chance to hit when you're blinded, and when you're using the healing rod. What a fun battle! <laughs> it's certainly something. I can be charmed. Please hit. Nice! Oh. That thing has 100 HP. Right, Fairy's got... Her stats are reduced to 1 because she got hit by the aging status. Oh no. And that thing is in the back row too. It might be more efficient for me to reset, to be completely honest. It might in fact be more efficient for me to equip two weapons instead of one of them healing. Then again, Ferris is at 1 HP at the beginning of battle, what am I gonna do? They can skip the turn that, by the way, and do nothing, so... This is what happened with the charm dude on the left. If we'd just be allowed to press the reset button, but no, on the attack. Reset button is allowed, okay. Alright, I think this like gotta take 20 minutes. Like unironically, with the chance to hit and hurt dealing effectively no damage. And getting confused all the time. It's gonna be more efficient to reset. Oh boy. The problem here is we might run into encounters instead first. The music. Alright, I'm gonna turn you into a freelancer already though. Alright, we actually managed to make it here again. So this is where I think it is more pragmatic to go and use... I'm gonna use the bow on here with the ribbon and stuff. I'm gonna use... I'm gonna use the healing rod on you. Alrighty. Which means I should put her into the back row as well. And yeah, that's what happens when it resets. The capture card is trying to adjust or something. Falcon. Have I done this challenge before? No. I've done a lot of other challenges before, but this one in particular I have not. The chance to one-shot this thing. You're immune to this now. You're not immune to the paralysis part, unfortunately. Optimally, you would be able to hit right now, but you cannot move. 
immune to blind, that's good. I don't sh should have given him the doom sickle. That has a higher chance of success anyways. Didn't work. Alright. Probably more efficient to reset now. Right, we can also miss. And there's the paralysis. Okay. I think it just makes more sense to... Do this differently. Here, let me... Music. Jeez. It doesn't matter what I give you. Actually, white magic technically gives you more magic power. Killable. I'm actually gonna give you the doom thing. Shield, just in case we're getting to an encounter. Ribbon and... Health cap is the same speed, actually. I'm gonna turn you into a freelancer as well. Alright, so here's the catch. I'm very hesitant to save right now, because the way the game decides its initial seed for, you know, starting encounters is based on your current loadout. Also, I didn't think this through. Yeah, I can't attack with you. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep reviving the thing. And Ferris is gonna take forever to kill that. So I guess we're just gonna hope that we're gonna run past these things without encounters. You know, kinda like before. Uh-oh. Kitty cats. Do they dance? Wait, no. Butts is no longer the healer, Yaga. <laughs> this is not good. Oh, she dodged. Oh, no. Well. I think it would be more pragmatic to just reset to be full the mountain. <laughs> also, I keep forgetting to... ...move the rose around. This could take a while to knock these out. They only have like 900 HP, but you know, I did the 100 right there. Hey, Figbird, thank you. I will definitely need to luck here. Maybe we can heal against the tide of enemies attacking. How's the challenge going? Quite fine. We ran into a few roadblocks so far, and this one here is another one that I didn't anticipate, because I have no way to deal with poison right now, which is not something I even thought of beforehand. Ah. Yeah, those cats look angry. Very angry. Might. <laughs> All right, two down. All right. In hindsight, I probably should load the other save file because if I get into encounters, at least we can deal with them in a reasonable time span. As opposed to either not at all, or very slowly. <laughs> I 
But the great thing about this challenge is we get to see the full moveset of most common monsters. Yeah, we definitely get to see them do more stuff than usual, it's true. Evasion is like the yeah. like how on like cards. They have no evasion, so it's just the base chance of the Doom Scythe to hit that misses occasionally. Uh oh. Ferris, you need to dodge a bunch of attacks here. Okay, you tried to use the boom thing there. Didn't quite work. Getting there slowly but surely. <laughs> so the Doom Axe has a hit percentage of 85%, actually. It's not 90%, 85. Still way better than most other axes. And yes, I cannot use Defend or Run Away commands either, or Roll. Changing Roll, that is. Nice. Very good, we're getting there, slowly but surely. I just thought of another thing. If I didn't have to equip the heal rod, because Ferris is normally at 1 HP on the boss, I would be able to go with two weapons instead. Try and knock it out more quickly. Yeah, I have to use the attack command. There we go. We are actually at full HP right now, but we are quite a few steps away. Alright, let's get you in the front and you in the back. Okay, we are here. Let's see, do I want to use a weapon on you instead for dealing damage? I think this makes more sense. Can the flower be... ...put to sleep? No, but the little guys can be put to sleep. There's no reason to have a shield. Alrighty, fairies, you're gonna take care of the little flowers and don't die in the meantime. You're gonna try and knock out the big guy. The downside is I don't have a way to undo confusion. Which one are which plant anyways? Let's see, 1 in 3 chance to proc Doom, and then uh, like a uh, 80 or 90% chance to actually land it. Hit the plant please. Didn't hit it. The two leftmost flowers are the more dangerous ones. Hit the plant. Nice, alright. We're looking really really good here. Ooh, that's confusion. We got this paralysis. We're good. Well, maybe good. We take 100 damage per attack from them. 
but they also only have 100 HP. So as long as Ferris can go within a reasonable time, we should be good here. Nice. Okay. We're good. Sweet. And we even get an elixir. Actually, I think that's guaranteed, isn't it? So now we need to somehow get off the mountain too. We're not out of the woods yet. So... I'm gonna turn Ferris back into a... Mystic Knight, I think. For the extra speed. Double grip to deal far more damage. Elf key for evasion. Don't get a coronet because that thing is way too heavy. You go on the back row and get a gold shield for evasion as well as a healing rod so you can heal. Left and hand, right hand, by the way, does not matter in this game. We cannot get back attacked, but enemies can be fast. No, 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 don't hit Ferris. Okay. Bonk is just too slow to guarantee going first. If I had Ferris as the healer instead, this would be more reliable here. But at least we can one-shot these things guaranteed now. Way better than before. Should have healed Ferris. Nice dodges. Very well then. Ferris has very slightly more speed than Monk, so that would help here quite a bit. Also, I keep Monk as a freelancer instead of a white mage, because that way he can equip the ribbon, which has way more defense stats as well as a good chunk more speed that he would otherwise get. Because it gives plus 5 to all stats. <laughs> Alright, we're almost at the save point. Okay, I think we made it. I don't think there's encounters in here. Alright! Now we need to get off the mountain, but at least the boss is down for good. This is a phoenix down, which we can't use. This is not allowed to. Alright, preemptive, very nice. So I'm pretty sure that Sting Eagle would be faster than Ferris. Yeah, faster than Bonk. And now that I don't have to worry about Poison Breath as much anymore, I just knock out the Eagle first. Does being on the back row affect the proc chance of weapons? No, it should be the same. So you could sit in the back row with the Doom Scythe in order to just guarantee... <laughs> ...take less damage from the little flowers, which would have been probably more reasonable, but I was more, more worried about than one-shotting the little flowers after we knock out, knock out the big flower. And we only had a few rounds to go anyways before it was becoming increasingly impossible to actually hit it. Or knock it out entirely. Zerkers auto attack? They do, yes. Berserkers are allowed. People told me that, yeah, you should use Berserkers. All they do is ever attack. They don't do anything, they just randomly attack even. Hit this one. It's kind of funny to me that I didn't even realize that I had a written that also protects against poison. Because Again, poison is not normally an issue in these games. Also, funnily enough, I actually don't mind getting frequent ish encounters because this means Fairy's HP is not gonna drop down to 1 in between encounters. Although that might not be true here from these guys. I'm gonna wait until they move. Okay. 
Alright, because they can use an attack called Bone, which drops you to 1 HP. And if Ferris gets dropped to 1 HP and then immediately takes a Poison Tick damage, then we are in big trouble. Alright, we're good. I actually don't know how much HP these things have. And these can also paralyze, so... Just in case, I wanna try and heal up, but maybe it would be more pragmatic to just attack twice instead with Bonk. All the experience the other miss. It's actually beneficial, I will say, to stack experience on some characters. I'm mostly worried about the ability points the others two don't get. Okay, this should be two eagles usually. So they just deal damage. We're good here. Because we can easily heal up. Just might take a while until we can hit them since they do have a good chunk of evasion. Miss number two. So that claw would normally have poison bunk, but thanks to the ribbon, can't get poisoned. I don't know where you lock in an antidote into the ribbon, but there is one in there. Also, my alarm tells me that I should go and get some food sometime. over there does not contain anything interesting, so we just ignore it. Alright, we should... So the Poison Breath actually has a lot of variance on how much damage it can possibly do. So I think it can high roll up to like six or 700. Maybe more. But I'm not sure about that part. And... In this case, I would prefer not to find out, to be honest, so... Just try to knock it out before that happens. And yes, experience is distributed among all living characters. Zombie also counts as living for the purpose of getting experience, by the way. Could be sketchy. Alright, thank you for not attacking Ferris because you would have knocked her out right here. I would prefer not to attack with Ferris here, but I don't have a choice. Okay. That dragon, dragon early hit Ferris for 500 damage, so... Good thing it didn't do that now. Gonna briefly wait on to see what the dragon does. Just in case I should heal. And yes, if Ferris dies and the enemy is not specifically a singular zombie dragon, I have to reset, because Bonk cannot do anything to regular enemies.
One thing I was thinking about just now, there would actually be a purpose behind giving all my melee characters just counter if they don't need to use double grip when I use like the freelancer class at some point. Just being able to equip counter actually would be helpful. Because I don't need to master monk in order to use counter, because they don't really use well, I don't have a use to put on any, any other like slots on them. Alright. Come out of this with good health. Zombie dragons have how much HP? 4590. That's a very specific number. Either way, two healing rod attacks will reduce the amount of damage or attacks that the fairy needs to do by one. There's a bunch of money in that cave, but I don't care right now. We're out! We made it! <laughs> Jeez. We're not entirely out of the woods yet, but at least we could save. So let me grab the money real quick. Maybe make it out of here without getting murdered in the meantime. Maybe. Uh oh. Dodge the attacks, fairies! Dodge them! Oh, shoot. I have to reset here because butts literally can't do anything. Enjoy the weird music distortion. Good thing I went outside before saving. Eh, uh, before trying to go back for this. Okay, we made it. Number two. Even got some money out of it. Gonna save again. Because there could be these ridiculous enemies around here. We made it! Sorry, a little bit more eyesore. Until we get to the inn. And get to... Eat some local specialty dishes that also heal you. And some useless potions as a treat. Nom nom nom. Was a little fun fact. Thank you for the eight potions. There's only two sheep running around outside now. Previously there were three. Ah, oh. alrighty. I think we can finally go back to shop uh, classes to learn stuff instead of anything else. And go back to the front row. Darkness bow is actually probably preferable right now, so that's good. I don't need healing for now. Don't forget that Galaf has the bone mail equipped. Important. 
Once there are no more sheep, you can't get the meal servers anymore. That is indeed accurate. You get the power ring. And you get an elf cape. Okay, nice. And now that I know that poison can be genuinely an issue, I'm going to go ahead and actually grab the one armor that makes you specifically immune to poison. It's not poison type damage, which that's what I originally thought it did. It is specifically the poison status. can be equipped by Chemist and Mimic, so it is extremely restricted on who can even equip this thing. The way you get to it is by... Actually, I actually forget how you get to it. Oh, you go upstairs here. Then over here, then over here, then you go down, and I think it's in this chest. There it is, the angel suit. Highest magic evasion in the game, by the way. You thought it gave immunity to the poison damage too? I thought it didn't, but... I might be wrong, or it could be pixel remaster thing, as you say. But there's always a chance I'm wrong, let me be honest. My memory is not terribly reliable. It's mostly right, but sometimes I just get stuff weirdly wrong. I'm not sure what to do about that. Aside from keep trying. Sorry, I was kind of distracted on the side. I thought the cutscene was going on for longer, but that's outside here. What can I get now? Normally this is where you can pick up the float spell, I think so somebody already mentioned. But I'm not gonna use it. Thinking about it, the only way I can get float is by defeating a stingray while using the dancing knife to confuse it for it to cast Mighty Guard on me. Would that be useful anywhere? Technically. But I couldn't heal in between. <laughs> at all. Hey Ryu Tempest, welcome. How are you doing today? Oh no, Lana died again. Don't worry, she's just playing dead. To encourage the hero for eating the grass that she just ate. To prove that it's not poisoned or something like that.
Alrighty, but I think that's probably it for me for today, everybody. We have made a pretty substantial advancement towards the end game, although we are literally in the middle of everything. But we're going to unlock a bunch of things, and I will try to kind of have a plan as to what I'm going to do with the cactus rather than just winging it. That's going to be a little bit more efficient in the future as well. You're well, I'm glad to hear that. How's the run going? Well, a few roadblocks here and there, unexpected, but that's actually... Honestly, this is the first challenge in a while that just kind of gave me unexpected roadblocks, which is very pleasant, I'm not gonna lie. I actually kind of enjoy that part right now. Usually, I already kind of largely know what the problems are going to be with the challenges and what ways I can think and work around it, but here, a few unexpected things. It's been pretty good. Alrighty, thank you so much everybody. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for listening and for lurking. I hope you enjoyed your stay, I hope you enjoyed being around and well, hopefully until next time. Take care and have a good night.